Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell, keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated and be as sensitive as you can be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'd like you to be seated. Be very prayerful while you are seated. Be very sensitive. Let your heart be open because of what the Lord will be doing tonight. We are shifting deeper into this mystery that I'm showing you. And I have already seen that which the Lord will be doing tonight. And that's why I'm saying, be sensitive in your spirit. Hallelujah. Father, tonight, in the name of Jesus, we pray that your power, your light, your grace will prevail over us. We pray that your word will dispel every darkness. Let there be such a demonstration of the power of light over darkness. I pray, O oh God, that age-long captivities will come on their knees tonight. Open us to the mysteries of the Spirit. Let there be a performance in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Hallelujah. Let me just make one or two announcements and then we'll go into the Word of God. Tonight's Word will come with fire fire every time most times when the lord wants to reveal to me how the meeting will be he will use one of the emblems of the supernatural to signify what he's doing and while i prayed i saw fire that's what i saw fire is one of the elements of the supernatural there are the there are five elements that god manifests himself with there is the earth there is light there is water so i know that god is doing great things tonight and we bless god for the worship team and that which they did tonight please take it high for me we started a series last week examining the subject of deliverance and um, i must confess to you that there's so much to teach especially when you dapple into this subject and um my focus please let me have your attention my focus is not necessarily to give us a thorough exegesis on the subject of demonology but i'm limiting the context of my teaching in this series just to the aspects of deliverance there's something that i want us to understand about the nature and the character of deliverance are we together so i have edited a number of things and um we may not go into certain very deep details like the origin of Satan, the pre-Adamites, the Nephilims, uh, sons of Belial, and all of these other things that help to extensively talk about the kingdom of darkness. I hope that in another series we'll get to it. But um, I just want to show us um, the, the deliverance dimension. That's, that's just where I want us to focus on. And then to help us understand and appreciate a few things 
let us also take note that the motif behind this series is to help to create intelligence in the area of deliverance i think that um, there is a lot of gap in knowledge which stems from ignorance or exaggeration and so we're hoping to create a system of balance many in an attempt to scorn at the subject have become victims of what only this subject can set them free from and like the dear lady shared when she was here and then others um, in an attempt to focus on it have pushed it beyond its boundary of relevance and their whole lives regardless of supposed deliverance does not show anything around the victory of Christ so there is always a need to put everything in context are we good tonight hold hands while you're seated and let's just pray in the spirit to open up our capacity for spiritual understanding Shabla Kato Sikete Balados Shabrandos Kadaba Hoshalabaria Katos. We pray in the spirit so that our spirits will be alive and our minds will be receptive to the truths of God's word. Shadabanda Skalabara Hasode Balikesh Zebreteke Toko Soda Balada Balada Boots. Let the scroll be opened. Let the mysteries be unveiled. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight we are going to be looking at the subject of deliverance. And then I will be sharing with you. We started last week. I'm just giving you the course content for tonight's discussion we'll be looking at the subject of deliverance and then we'll also revisit again what i call access points helping you to understand the gateways that authorize darkness please listen you're listening for yourself you're listening for your families and for those following online regardless of what your perspectives are about the subject of deliverance give me a chance to bring you the word of god and let's look at it together uh, as always we are allowed to vet the quality of whatever is being communicated and to receive that which we believe is right but it's important to at least give a chance there are people once they hear they leave they don't even wait they just close their hearts and um, it's, it's going to be a dangerous experience if you just shut your heart at any dimension and any matter of the kingdom because jesus himself addressed this subject so let's give ourselves a chance to be built by the word of god i will be teaching on levels of satanic influence that will be the third discussion as god grants us grace i'll do my best to see that we end on time so that we can rest we have a lot already tomorrow levels of satanic influence or satanic activities would we'll look at it and then if god grants us grace and the time we're able to manage time well we will look at the flesh praise the lord obadiah chapter one there's just one chapter and verse 17 let's begin our teaching for tonight obadiah one and verse 17 but upon mount zion shall be deliverance it's amazing where deliverance was meant to happen it was not meant to happen outside then if delivered you come to mount zion the fact that you experience deliverance is proof that you are standing upon Mount Zion. Are we together? So this already tries to settle a very wrong notion that deliverance and etc. should happen outside of the church, outside of where God is. Then when you are delivered, you now come. 
God's system has always been come as you are and then you are made into what he wants you to be. So upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. We began last week by saying that there is a relationship between the mystery and the ministry of deliverance and obtaining your possession. Notice from this scripture the Bible says it is their possession. So it is not a possession that is someone else's and then it will be given to you. It is your possession. It is your inheritance. Are we together? So there is no doubt to the fact that it is, a, it is, it is allotted already for you. But in order to possess it, although it is your possession, being your possession is one thing becoming a possessor of your possession is another thing are we together so um this is a very good platform to begin tonight's teaching the bible says the house of jacob shall possess their possession that means it is possible that they do not possess their possession it is your possession it is your inheritance but to come into the experience of that possession the bible says there is something that happens and that's what we are discussing what is deliverance let's discuss that subject what exactly is deliverance the bible is full of texts that talk about deliverance from the old testament the gospels the epistles and even in the book of revelation so what exactly is deliverance um let me give us a foundation and then i will give you my definition now the first thing I want you to know about deliverance, please look up before you write, is that um, generally deliverance has to do with a system of rescue, a system of freedom from maybe bondage, danger. I'm giving you the overall scope. Every time we mention the word deliverance, it has to do with a system that provides rescue a system that provides freedom from bondage from danger and generally speaking from evil every time we talk about deliverance it has to do with rescue it has to do with emancipation it has to do with freedom from any of these three bondage danger and then generally speaking evil are we together let's look at two scriptures exodus chapter 6 and verse 6 exodus chapter 6 and verse 6 i hope i'm right it says wherefore say unto the children of israel i am the lord and i will bring you out the word bring you out there is the word deliverance i will deliver you from under the burdens of the egyptians and I will read you out of their bondage and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments so we see different expressions here that relates to deliverance the Lord is saying I will bring you out from their burdens I will read you out of their bondage I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgment why this is because of what happened in chapter 1 and verse 11 let's go to chapter 1 and 11 same exodus chapter 1 and verse 11 it says therefore they did set over them taskmasters listen carefully the purpose of the deliverance in chapter 6 is because of a situation that we find in chapter 1 that therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens and they built for pharaoh treasure cities python and rameses all of the gods of egypt so they were they were subject to a system of labor a system of bondage and a burden what was the assignment to build cities for other gods are we together they were mandated as an act of affliction to build treasure cities where they kept the 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 booties that they had gotten from war and from oppressing neighboring nations and then to also build different tabernacles places of rest for all their gods and their idols 
and the Lord said that I will bring you deliverance so before there is need for deliverance there must have been a system of bondage are we together that subjects men that subjects territories that subjects both animate and inanimate things to some sort of danger some sort of oppression and so on and so forth are we together let's look at colossians chapter 1 paul is teaching the church in Colossae. colossians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14 and then i would like to teach something very briefly here before we move on it says who hath delivered us talking about jesus now who hath delivered us from the power of darkness everybody say power of darkness notice the bible didn't just say he delivered us from darkness he delivered us from the power of darkness that means darkness is powerful darkness is a force it is very unwise to believe that um, all of these spiritual forces are not powerful we only say they are powerless relative to the superiority of God's intelligence and the power that is now in motion through the Christ are we together when you are contrasting darkness relative to the excellency of God's power his all-surpassing victory then it is valid to consider Satan and all his cohorts as powerless but relative to the spiritual advantage the plane from which these spirits operate it is very childish and immature to believe that they do not wield any kind of power and force on their own even a normal human being who can access the realm of the spirit any dimension higher than the three-dimensional realm has an advantage over one who does not sustain that uh, that ability are we together now i have taught you that any dimension you can access outside of the three-dimensional realm will provide you an advantage over the natural person scientists would tell us that even lower animals that we call lower have the ability to perceive danger and perceive reality that the normal man who is unrefined are we together cannot perceive is that true we see dogs we see animals respond to people some of them have very superior sense organs these are beings that are not empowered by any kind of spirit whatsoever yet they wield an advantage so it is it is i'm, I'm just buttressing on this to help us understand because you see one of the greatest challenges with the body of christ is we just copy everything we know we never take out time to allow the spirit of revelation to break down the truths that have been passed down from generation to generation just because we read it in a book and a senior man of god advocated it or certain people that represent pillars to the body most of them had the understanding but most of us just receive it as head knowledge and we teach it in bible schools so most believers just have the chaff of that knowledge there is no substance that backs up their conviction are we together so darkness is powerful paul is not ashamed to tell us in fact here's how jesus said it he said behold i give you power are we together that's luke 10 19 can we just run there and then return back to Colossians? Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. Behold, I give you power. Listen, the word power there is not the Greek word dunamis. It's the word exousia. It's the word authority, right? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an authorization to legislate rather than the ability to by yourself cause change. Are we together? Behold, I give you exousia, authority to tread upon serpents, and upon scorpions and over how many all the power jesus himself is acknowledging that the enemy has power but that he has given you an ability to manifest and legislate above that power and then he says nothing shall by any means hurt you the only reason why nothing shall hurt you is because you are operating from a dimension that is higher than the existing that means if something is hurting you, it means you are not accessing and working with that power or you do not have knowledge on how to put it to work. Are we together now? God bless you. So back to Colossians chapter 1. 
and verse 13. I hope we are together. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness? And then the Bible says, hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. 14. In whom we have redemption through the blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So he's telling us the basis for that translation. That the, the possibility to be translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son has happened on the basis of redemption and that by the blood are we together now so salvation is a form of deliverance the salvation that has been given believers today that we enjoy the bible does not just call it redemption alone the bible calls it deliverance what then is deliverance write this down i did my best to scrabble an intelligent definition that will capture everything that i believe the word of god um says about deliverance so let's let's try and see if my definition makes sense ready deliverance is a system for experientially establishing the victory and the authority of Christ or Jesus Christ don't worry take it gradually I will repeat myself deliverance is a system for experientially establishing the victory and the authority of Jesus Christ I'm going to continue I'm just breaking so that you write let's take it again deliverance is a system for experientially underline the word experientially establishing the victory and authority of jesus christ can i continue over satan comma demons and all the powers of darkness concerning our lives a system for experientially establishing the victory and authority of jesus christ over satan demons and all the powers of darkness over satan demons and all the powers of darkness concerning our lives by this definition we see that deliverance for a believer and the scriptural approach to deliverance is much more than the activity of physical exertion like a present day fight deliverance is concerned with establishing making a reality that has been finished to become your experience here and now are we together so that deliverance is a system for experientially establishing the victory and authority of christ jesus over satan demons and all the powers of darkness concerning our lives i wrote something small here that deliverance um and then by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in christ today is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it listen carefully our approach to the subject of deliverance and spiritual warfare has to do with establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting to create it it's important that you have this understanding and this revelation alone will make all the difference in your approach to the subject of deliverance and the subject of spiritual warfare that you and i should approach the subject of deliverance from a perspective that seeks to establish and manifest the victory that is already wrought through the substitutionary sacrifice of christ rather than an attempt to physically exert energy to fight and win as though it was a product of your own exertion i think this is this in itself i can dwell all night explaining this because this may be the reason why many many well-meaning individuals and by extension deliverance ministries 
get little or no victory out of the the abundance of the physical exertions many of us here may be victims of that experience so we are not talking about a state here where you fight for victory in terms of physically confronting satan one on one as it were i will tell you where that revelation came from are we blessed so say after me deliverance for the believer has to do with establishing and manifesting authority over darkness rather than fighting for it are you getting the point now let me dramatize something here please come doctor come watch this you stand here and um, hold my book this is your inheritance this is your possession please look up i want to dramatize something that will help us you stand here and then ah, they are all ladies where are the gentlemen sam come now watch this the bible says and you have to understand this is where i think many people find confusion when the bible when the bible speaks look at this very carefully god speaks from the standpoint of eternity he does not speak as if he's talking within the frame of time are we together so in the speakings of god he always speaks with the expression of completion which is not a lie but then the dynamics of converting the prophetic realities that have been finished in christ to now become the experience of the saints is where there is confusion are we together so the bible tells us from the foundation of the earth the lamb was slain but there are still people going to hell today are we together if the lord is to talk to you now if you were to see jesus jesus will look at you and tell you you should not be crying financially because you are walking in abundance that's how he talks but then you will think that he's being rude and sarcastic to you because at the point he's talking to you you may not even have five naira he cannot speak otherwise his his viewpoint spans he's not dimensional in his approach if he breaks himself to be dimensional it's an act of his mercy to help man understand him are we together that's why he's called alpha omega the word and there was just an expression to help us comprehend he is both the beginning and the end so to him there is nothing like beginning and end in his dimension that does not exist are you getting my point now so god can speak to you and say emeka finish the house by tomorrow whereas you don't even have land that's god speaking emeka finish the house by tomorrow and as at the time he's talking your landlord is waiting with a policeman in front of you and god will never talk about the landlord emeka i have given you your house and your key you will even see it in a vision god giving you key and you say thank you and then wake up from the vision with a, a rude knock from the door by an angry landlord now how do i reconcile what i have seen because god will not change he speaks once it is only you that hears twice the first hearing is the hearing of the flesh the second hearing is now the hearing of the spirit that brings understanding once have i spoken but you need to hear twice because the first hearing is from a carnal point but then the holy spirit now helps you to have the ear that the bible says he that hath an ear the second kind of ear you now hear from the spirit the hearing that brings understanding that's why the bible says faith comes by hearing but there is a superior hearing hearing now not just by your senses by the word of god are you understanding what i'm teaching you now so this guy is now confused and he's saying in the realm of the spirit the lord spoke to me and said i have given you abundance yet nothing is happening and then the lord appears to you and you are trying to say oh lord look at all the demons and the witches and then the lord tells you something like my grace is sufficient or my victory is still in force and you wake up and you are like oh god how can you be speaking like this whereas in experience that's what paul was trying to teach the church in hebrew 
he was quoting from Psalm 5 what is man that thou art mindful of not the son of man that thou visitest him the Bible says you have made him lower than Elohim are we together you have crowned him with glory and honor you have set him above the works of your hands and that in doing that you did not leave anything under his feet but he creates a dimension he said but as it is today we do not yet see experience so you must be able to balance between the prophetic communications of the spirit the prophetic communications of the word and the experiential manifestation of the same in your life otherwise you will die like a chicken quoting the word of god between the prophetic speakings of god and the manifestation in your life there is a mystery that connects them and those who have this are the ones who become possessors it is your possession in christ but it takes an understanding of what to do to make it your possession here forever O oh lord thy word is settled where it never said in your life thy word is settled in heaven it will take engaging these mysteries to make the word settled in your life ah your help has come this this is already a deliverance for someone because for many years you kept jumping oh my god i see victory jesus said it is finished everything is all right wonderful amazing my life is full of beauty and glory you are not lying but after 10 years 15 years your father said this thing and while he was saying it sickness was eating him up till he died i, I don't want you to feel bad i'm not trying to be sarcastic are we together you said this yourself and after 10 years there's nothing in your life that demonstrates the victory of christ and some out of that frustration will just say this is a lie no it's not a lie forever your word is settled but to know how to make it our experience one of the mysteries that have been allocated by the wisdom of god to make spiritual realities that are established in the christ to manifest in our life is called the mystery of deliverance are you getting the point now it is not the only kingdom mystery i've taught you many of them we're approaching one of them now this gentleman wants to possess his possession this is a son of jacob he's read obadiah chapter 1 and verse 17 he's believed are we together now because the bible says whoever believes our reports the arm of the lord will be made manifest in his life now this brother believes but every time standing between him and that inheritance just turn to face me sam is an obstacle this brother has read in the bible that we have been translated colossians 1 13. it didn't say we will be the bible says we have been but he's seen something that is is a cause in his life watch this this guy knows the word of god i hope you understand that he has believed he's a worker in church and he has seen that every time people get to the edge the edge of breakthrough something happens now he said in the name of jesus i don't believe this i am exempted and to his shock regardless of that confession his life is still a victim of it that thing happens as if the thing didn't hear him are you getting what i'm saying now please listen very carefully okay this guy comes from a family where everybody is barren i'm sorry sorry for this are we together everyone is barren and now he makes up his mind no it is god that makes everyone a fruitful i mean he can make the wilderness to be fruitful you know children are inherited from the lord now he has confessed that he has done that well and it is true but in experience now he gets married and to his shock he finds out that his wife cannot get pregnant and he says no the devil is just joking let me just release my faith and you watch what happens one month becomes one year becomes two years becomes decades becomes 20 years and the man is angry by 75 and he's no longer believing in jesus and when you come to him as a zealous young man what giant from koinonia man of god since i was blind say if you don't get out of here i will slap you i spent 60 years forcing the word to work my conclusion is that god alongside all the scammers called preachers are liars some of us that person i just described may be your father may be your mother 
they will show you pictures of them and Reinhard Bonke when he was young and tell you I and tear it in your presence and say I don't believe all that junk again the frustration that comes you come from a family that is full of poverty and goodness you found the truth and you are happy you are rejoicing over it and all of a sudden you find out that you are now a graduate and your elder sisters are looking at you and say we graduated 15 years ago none of us the highest among us just got a contract job for one week and it was over and you come and say it's because you know how arrogant we are young people when we are just touching revelation we mock at others and laugh and say oh sisters it's because of the church you are going to me i'm going to koinonia wait and see what happens then you are a graduate and you celebrate the first christmas as a graduate with no job it touches you and you pretend i don't know i think god is working something powerful after you dance and sing and do what you know to do by five years you now sit with them in a discussion and you are like ah, ah. so this this thing is true this is why my mother was not happy this is why my father was not happy this series is saving you many of you many of you are already going through what i'm saying now and if you don't open your eyes and your ears to listen to the way out you will be very frustrated how about men of god like our sister shared who come from terrible families with idol worship and then they get born again filled with the holy spirit and begin to walk in strange miracles and start a ministry and say oh god god forbid i mean i used to be from a family of idol worship now i'm free and the guy begins his ministry after five years he finds out that the members go down everything goes down an attack comes on him and the ministry and he goes to tell his uncle and the uncle laughs and say why do you think i stopped being a pastor because i was once a pastor were you told he said no so well let me educate you i was once a pastor the crusade that happened in this city i was the chairman organizing committee the same thing that happened you would try to argue and say uncle my own is not like your own he said you he says it's the same thing it's there and then many of you now just like i was stand and you are confused you say no no let me go back to the bible and you still see it there and have translated us from the kingdom of darkness and have translated us not will translate and have translated us many of you rush and come to us men of god and say sir i read here and have translated me i believed everything you said why is my life like this listen to what we tell you you don't have faith or you really don't believe it i if you be, look at me i'm rich i'm entering a jeep so he said i'm okay money can deceive to think just because you have a jeep and you have a nice watch you are free no there are many other dimensions you don't have to be delivered to be rich there are many people under yokes of darkness that are millionaires so be careful lest you use money the reason is because money has a very funny way of making your needs met so it can lie to you to think just because you don't see any obvious need yet you are free we have used money for a long time in the body to mean that i am free and say what's the proof look at my estate look at five cars look at a flourishing church does that look like someone under oppression my helpers reading volumes of books i went to almost every bookstore i could find and gathered books i read books to prepare myself on fire i was seeing the power of god move through my life i was having encounters and then to my greatest shock in the midst of that spiritual height demons come to me regardless i mean i started quoting scriptures from secondary school 
you would receive awards there were 52 scriptures if you could quote they would give you an award i don't know how many times i got that award and you would think how then should i hide the word in my heart to quote 52 scriptures every year new ones i'm not talking of old ones i could quote chapters of the bible and here comes demons into my room and i'm shouting in jesus name the blood of jesus and they are not moving i'm saying in the name of jesus i'm a child of god and they are not moving <sighs> who will i tell this who will believe me god are you have you suddenly become weak listen when you see me just stand to talk and demons are crying find out what happened i want to show you where the problem is these demons will press my neck the anointing didn't leave me the anointing is still there the same way elisha died of sickness with the healing anointing still in his bones why didn't the anointing work while he was deteriorating to death yet the anointing raised a dead body who didn't have faith the dead body was not begging please raise me just he came in contact with bones couldn't the anointing bring back flesh like ezekiel 37 because we know it's a possibility so why didn't the anointing bring back the prophet again there are mysteries in this kingdom what you do not know you can argue to your detriment it will smash you into pieces like it's happening to many people we are just not honest to confront truth until we find light for me i i pray that god will make you like me i don't hear yes sir i keep searching until the truth is found many of you you see when the holy spirit refuses to allow an answer satisfy you is because there is a grace in that area he wants you to reveal to the body so you come to a man of god you come to me or anybody and we just give you explanations uh, to manage our ego and the holy spirit to say no no with all honor that's not the answer he's telling you find out so that you can help someone if i didn't pass through what i pass through now i probably will wave this teaching like many are waving and say look let's just focus on jesus and you are focusing on jesus but you are seeing that something is wrong everything the word of god declares is true it is the system for accessing it we do not know and what we have been taught is not wrong but is largely incomplete this series is to give you the balance you hear testimonies of people already look at the pastors with their churches look at the gentlemen that came someone from us just gets up another person just sends 4.5 you think the person doesn't have relatives in need doesn't he have brothers and sisters who are looking for 30,000 and he can't help them and then come somewhere i told you you're what just follow me by now this brother is frustrated oh god give me my possession and he comes and he says man of god i'm still waiting and i said don't worry abraham waited 25 years what what are you complaining about your small boy come on just be paid and i start getting angry you are getting rude you are challenging my anointing my anointing is angry with you i will curse you you see that and the brother leaves me quietly and goes back and he knows something is wrong I'm not being sarcastic I love the body listen carefully there must be an answer to this that answer is what will bring about the experience of possessing your possession that even even the critic in your life will know that the hand of God this brother has caught this this sister has caught this I prayed to God eh? and I told God I said by the time Lord we finish this series let us hear of testimonies that people will stand up and say no this is this is if not because the person sharing it is there we will think it's a lie or stage manage I told you last week you can know that deliverance has happened to a person and a family by the speed that's where you know that those realities have been piled up in the spirit for many years and it's usually an avalanche overnight doors liftings all kinds of things happen do you believe that a woman who should have had six children and has been barren for six years 
or for 10 years or 20 years you think it's one child that will come at once right by the time god shifts that barrier you will be surprised the kind of testimonies that will surprise you you believe that a man that has been grounded by witchcraft for decades the only testimony he will get is a new job that gives him thirty thousand. when will he recover no that's not the kind of testimony that follows deliverance the kind of testimony that follows deliverance is a sign and a wonder god makes a statement that i can in delivering you restore the years the canker worm the palmer worm you should be married 20 years ago but then i move and give you triplets two times six children at once but upon mount zion there shall be deliverance whatever it is and when that happens the sons of jacob shall possess their possession hallelujah so this brother is standing then he takes an aggressive step watch this and then his eyes is open in the spirit watch this and he sees a spirit appear to him and tell him you will never make it but the bible says behold i give you power so satan where did you even get the audacity to show up in my room remember your room is anointed remember there's a bottle of anointing oil in that room don't forget remember there's a communion set in that room are you getting what i'm saying remember while the demon is talking to you a bible is on your bed have you forgotten sometimes a worship song is even playing yet he shows up no invitation he didn't knock the door and talks nonsense to you and all of a sudden he leaves who will i tell this to i can't tell apostle because i'm I will keep quiet and that's how many of us have been keeping quiet as a man of God you finish preaching in a crusade and go back in the night and a spirit comes to molest you to even sleep with you you get up in the morning who will I tell this embarrassing thing and while you are sitting someone comes for counseling counseling number one man of God there is a demon that comes to sleep with me every night you almost want to run away because that's your own experience too it will shock you that you will lay hands on the person and he will start manifesting and be free and you just wave the person and then return back and say my God now oh God who will deliver me Ay 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 Ebeniza Ebeniza Ay 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 Ebeniza my pastor Hallelujah Please go and sit down guys let's talk now why why does it look like there is a an extreme difficulty for the saints to make manifest the realities remember the bible says he that did not spare his son are we bible students that he that did not spare his son but offered him up for us will he not with him freely freely mark the word freely give us how many things then the Bible says that they that have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, what is their heritage? They shall reign. Yet we do not see this thing happening. That means something is wrong. So deliverance. Is one of the mysteries that was allocated by the wisdom remember the Bible says that it should be made to principalities and powers the manifold not one fold manifold the multifaceted wisdom of God deliverance is one of the expressions of the multifaceted wisdom of God so deliverance is concerned with experientially establishing and manifesting the victory and authority 
that we have in the Christ rather than physically fighting for it let me tell you where this fighting mentality came from and of course the Bible says we should fight the fight of faith and all of that but I mean this kind of fight have you seen people go to sleep and they tell you ah I, I fought and this and in a dream you saw yourself fighting the victory was almost there are we together then somebody woke you you get up with anger and annoyance and say I was about to, to stab the last snake and you woke me what kind of you are you are a wicked person watch this and then you go back to sleep again and sometimes the battle continues it is because of the way spiritual things act themselves that we have believed that just because in a dream or in a vision are we together some of you even wake up from that encounter feeling physically exerted so because of that scenario of acting we now believe that warfare is about physically trying to fabricate victory regardless of what you see or the way the expressions come in the spirit the word of God remains true that Christ has won the victory are you are you with me now that's where the confusion comes from and especially for those who work very strongly in the prophetic ministry they have helped in no way to amplify this com this co this confusion because what you see if not balanced with mental transformation and a good word base you will confuse people i can stand right now and make us stand and look at doctor in a vision and in that vision i can be seeing him inside a pit are we together and now i say doctor you are in a pit it's not a lie but that is just a prophetic symbolism to mean bondage are we together by the time i engage in whatever mystery the victory may show as him coming out from the pit so over many years of seeing different scenarios i may now write a book or i may now propose a theology are we together where people now start physically fighting to manifest their victory and this is why satan reigns over us because he's a master of the sense realm he knows that what you can see will challenge you let me ask you a question what happened to you last week with your night prayer are you not shocked at the level of attack that amplified you see that it happened for many of us right i told you it will happen because satan is the master of the sense realm you wake up in the night and sleep and go back and the same experience of them oppressing you supposedly happens again some of you as soon as you finish you went back in fact for some of you that activity has been on break since you you became on serious with god but now that you just started a little prayer all of a sudden it came now let me tell you satan will use your senses and tell you the word of god claims this if god were so powerful where is it then you will now dance to the realm of the senses and say kai that means let me go back to sleep in jesus name i must go back for the battle to come you are already defeated there's no possibility of victory under that condition in this kingdom the only instrument listen carefully the only the saints don't fight our warfare is the warfare of taking advantage of the forces of the spirit allocated to us the force of the word the force of the blood the name of jesus and all of these mysteries listen very carefully to enforce i repeat enforce if the purpose of your engaging those things is to create a physical fight you are defeated already the devil will eat you up and, and spit you watch this jesus is standing haven't walked on water to come peter says if it be thou listen carefully now bid me come and jesus says come peter gets up and started walking on water are we together now do you think while peter was walking on the water the water stopped being boisterous it still continued but it's just that because his focus was on jesus are we together that connection so the power that kept him on that water was not in his legs it was on the gaze of jesus are we together now the moment peter didn't stop walking on water he only shifted his gaze to somewhere else and his legs started going down for as long as his gaze was on jesus whatever the storm did 
now he's looking at jesus did not suddenly make the water quiet it was still boisterous but he was surprised that the water was not moving him the element for the victory was his connection with the eyes of jesus not his ability to walk well for as long as his legs remain but he turned his attention the bible said he saw that's what satan wants you to see satan is a master over the sense realm if he can deviate your focus to make you see the bulkiness of the challenges he will bring your faith down and strike you in a way that will affect you are we together god bless you thank you doctor We discussed access points last week that biblically speaking there are three main access points systems of authorization that Satan uses that demons use all occults all spiritism and any kind of extra physical manifestation of evil thrives upon these three platforms number one covenants covenants we discussed it last week i'm just giving us a quick review number one covenants a covenant is the most powerful of the three because i told you that a covenant is a system of authorization and that system of authorization can go beyond an individual that's what makes it powerful my obedience may affect me alone are we together but a covenant can allow me to do something um look at this Dr. Sean is here with his wife, Shade. Are we together? If I ask doctor and I say, sir, I want to come to your house and he says no. Then I turn to his wife and say, Shade, I want to come to your house. And she says, yes, the covenant of marriage. Are we together? If obeyed properly, I have a right to come to that house. And if he quarrels me and say, I thought I didn't invite you. I say, no, your wife who has also become one with you allowed me. You see why covenants are powerful because when you see satan veto certain things about you and comes is because he knows someone else you are connected to has authorized him are you getting what i'm saying now the same way in israel today i am not aware of many israelis who have come by themselves to call upon jehovah the god of abraham isaac and jacob in fact if you go to visit israel those who take christians on a tour the jewish people are shocked that christians are crying when they see some of these monuments to them is tourism they are waiting to be paid and they see it just come so this is the cave where my savior laid and you kneel down and the jew there is in shock what kind of people are these you are being emotional you go near the wailing wall and you are crying and wailing for your sins and choking prayer points at the wall and the guy is waiting for you to finish and just pay him his money yet in the midst of it you try to kill that israeli and a covenant he's not aware of will arise and defend him what kind of unfair thing is this they farm on a mountain that should not grow yet there is something that makes the earth to increase to them remember that person doesn't believe in jesus yet when god looks at them he sees abraham and sees the covenant the most feared nation on earth a little nation but indestructible by a mystery that even themselves they cannot understand the rabbinical institutes have spent decades studying what is the secret behind the immunity of the nation of israel israel is my firstborn god has made a covenant with the firstborn the apple of his eyes that he will kill and slay any nation because of a covenant and it's an everlasting covenant that he has made so when your grandfather was draining the blood of a goat near fire you were in the loins of prophecy but then he was saying look protect us and we contract this entire estate to you watch this then all of a sudden like i said last week some white missionaries from america just came and they said what are you guys doing they say for 150 years we have been serving this shrine. they said no 
no we bring you good news of glad tidings Jesus has come this is old we present to you Jesus and then you embrace the gospel of salvation and you felt that peace in your heart you were happy you were glad I have received Jesus two weeks later the missionaries started dying one by one remember they are the ones who got you born again and you were happy two weeks later your farm stopped producing as usual your peace was still in you you were happy and you love Jesus then you decided to come together to pray and while you prayed and prayed and prayed you just found out that one of your child started running mad on the street listen brothers and sisters there are seven gospels Jesus left with the church I'm not about to preach it now but the gospel of salvation is only one of them there is the gospel of the kingdom it is the gospel of the kingdom that reveals to you the keys of the kingdom they are not called the keys of salvation there is the gospel of the kingdom how you engage these mysteries to manifest that which is finished from the foundations of the earth I hate to be a bearer of bad news but it's just that many of us are not honest enough to look at our lives and look at our dear parents and look at our siblings one of our dear ladies she might be here I remember it was during was it during Christmas or early New Year this year her mother and, and, and I'm sorry to just have to talk about it but her mother a godly woman was standing in church sir just like everybody wonderful woman of God in the presence of everybody looking at her in the house of God with the anointing of the Spirit she fell down face forward in the presence of everybody and died right there prayer warriors came and prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing happened while that would happen her father paralyzed completely paralyzed completely in this place i'm not talking of another place when i heard that i said this is it this is it i must teach this this year this is it now do you know the family of that lady will almost beat you if you go to them with arrogance and say ladies and gentlemen look i don't know what you believe but that lady i think there are few people i know that pray like that lady in terms of consistency of the spiritual discipline of prayer what could be wrong what are we not seeing when Jesus walked the earth it was not like that the invincibility of his victory was incontestable what is wrong with our understanding So covenant number two I taught us that the second access point is ignorance don't forget ignorance ignorance is a force in the spirit just like faith ignorance is a force it can cause things to happen in fact the Bible calls a certain class of the demonic organogram rulers of darkness that means their domain of dominion is every time there is lack of illumination when they come to a life or they come to a physical territory where there is lack of spiritual illumination their dominion is activated they are called rulers of the darkness of this world not another world so they search for everywhere there is darkness in this world and that becomes their jurisdiction of authority Archbishop Benson Idahosa was explaining the power of light and its ability to conquer darkness and he said that there was darkness in a land it was a story there was darkness in a land for many weeks and the people in that land went to the Sun to complain s-u-n and they said son please help us there is darkness in our land and the Sun said you mean it darkness everywhere he said yes and then it the said the Sun said okay I'm coming to see the darkness and when the sun came there for three weeks and found out there was no darkness he said I've been you people are wasting my time I've been here for three weeks and I can't find the darkness and they said for as long as you are here 
the darkness cannot come so there is light the light shines the light shines notice the bible never says the light appears in darkness uh -uh. it is not the appearance of light that takes away darkness it is the shining it is the shining not just the appearance the light shines in darkness the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not are we together number three disobedience disobedience having the readiness to judge all obedience all disobedience when your obedience is complete disobedience authorizes the gates of darkness the gates of hell to prevail over the sins very quickly let's look at levels of satanic influences blessed be the name of the Lord is God speaking to someone tonight there are three main levels of satanic influences and that also includes the levels of satanic influences over the saints there is a dimension of satanic influence that cannot happen to you when you are in Christ but there is a dimension of satanic influence that you can still be a victim of even though you are in Christ let's look at it very quickly number one the first level of satanic influence and activity over mankind and creation is deception write it down deception the first level of spiritual attack over anyone at all is deception and this dimension can happen to both a believer and an unbeliever it was Paul who was speaking um, um, which of the church now help me it says Galatia the church in Galatia it says oh foolish Galatians who has bewitched you he was talking to believers are we together the word bewitching there does not have to do with drinking blood and eating flesh to bewitch or witchcraft in this context means to cause a man to err using the tool of deception are we together so who has caused you to err by proposing a deceptive theology to you let's look at a few scriptures very quickly second peter chapter 2 we'll read verse 2 verse 12 and verse 13 if we can run through it very quickly second peter chapter 2 we'll, look, we'll read verse 2 verse 12 and 13 media please help us second peter chapter 2 and then we'll look at revelation chapter 12 and verse 9 the bible says and many shall follow their pernicious ways deceptive ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of the bible is talking of a kind of deception here are we together now i don't want to go into other uh, more modern versions so that you see what pernicious there is but just know that he's speaking within the context of deception here go to verse 12 please 12 and then 13. it says but these Paul is really, I mean, Apostle Peter here is really angry. And he's using an expression that may even be considered offensive. He said, but this, as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not. Speak evil of the things that they understand not. He says, and shall utterly perish. In their own corruption that means that believers have been made to be deceived by the arrogance of bringing argument upon a doctrine you do not understand there are many people who would have been delivered but because they sat down under a preacher who believes in himself he's not been deceived took them away from the light that would have blessed them the Bible says they speak evil of the things that they do not understand there is a level of deception where you take people away from the truth in an attempt to save them just because you do not understand the relevance of that body of truth to the church and there are many of us men of God who are victims of this there are many believers who would not have been 
in the kind of spiritual situations that they are in except that they sat down under our tutelage and under our mentorship and we vented volumes of our ignorance to their minds that derailed them from the path they were already following to liberty they followed us away from their breakthrough let's look at the second revelation chapter 12 and verse 9 again media please help us very quickly we are still looking at deception three verses here i found just to explain the different kinds of deception this is talking about the great dragon revelation 12 and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceived how many the whole world so satan part of the system of establishing his dominion upon the earth and upon every territory is deception he deceived the whole world the bible says he was cast into where he was cast into where uh oh earth there's a problem the deceiver that deceives the whole world was thrown out of heaven unfortunately he landed here what do you think will happen here on earth deception so he comes to eve and manipulates eve comes to adam and says adam come let me tell you something did god really say that a b c d and adam said well he said we may freely eat of the food eve said this and that and that and then he said no there is something god is hiding from you god is hiding this i hope you know that satan never um, satan never wanted i used to think satan wanted to replace god no no satan didn't want to replace god he wanted to run a parallel government i will be like not i will be the most high the god continue your throne sit there i will also sit, i want to sit by your right hand now you understand what happened to man satan wanted to sit let's let's go since since the word eloha elohim it is plural add me to the godhead that's what he wanted I am I have done too much I hope you know I, I like oh dear I don't want to go into the pre adamite dispensation but I hope you know when you begin to read Jeremiah chapter 4 I, I don't want to go there don't, don't don't go there media um for time's sake you re, you realize that Satan was sent as a representative of the love of God to the then civilization and the then creation what jesus represents to our civilization was what lucifer the light bearer the custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom he was sent he didn't just deceive a third of the angels are you seeing how powerful his deception is a third of the angels that are in heaven where god is they fell for him talk more of you and then he deceived the kings of the earth and he was thrown down to ashes and the kings and the nations lamented they say you have become like one of us jeremiah chapter 4 when you read you who brought the nations the bible says he weakened the nation that was his sin it was not just pride there was something he made that made the nations weak and now he has become like one of us and he raised up a lamentation then you begin to compare with other scriptures that's what led to the darkness that was in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. The judgment that God declared upon that then civilization. Satan, the first occupant I told you of the Garden of Eden was not Adam. It was Satan. That was in Eden, the Garden of the Lord. So when Satan was watching God recreate the earth and then put men there, Satan said, okay, God, finish and go and let me come to the garden i'm used to he knew where to found to find eve he never said eve where are you it's god that said adam where are you satan always knows where to find them i know where frail human beings can be found let me tell you every man even from adam was born with the tendency to sin in iniquity jeremiah said did my mother he never said in sin remember it's iniquity that produces sin iniquity is a state of the heart the propensity to be vulnerable towards a thing that's why he said um, subdue replenish he used the word subdue in other words be careful there is a stranger i don't want to tell you his story 
but don't be surprised if you find out you are not alone in this garden and then satan came you think he came to eve one day no he had been coming ah eve so you are here today he said don't disturb me god is coming in the cool of the day he said okay let's talk eve satan's deception is so powerful remains small he would have gotten jesus read your bible <laughs> satan for you when satan took jesus up the mountain he tempted it on, him on three things that re, that represent the dimensions for spiritual growth the first dimension was your personal need that's where the temptation started from jesus you are hungry remember part of the supplies of the powers of heaven is to help you satisfy your personal need so satan i mean jesus don't watch stones like this when you are dying of hunger the power of god is able to turn stones into bread do it and jesus said no and satan found out okay i see you are so obsessed with your assignment you have left the realm of your individualism into kingdom next temptation let's talk about the issues now that concern the agenda of god why route it the hard way all the kings that are in these systems i deceive them and place them there they are my boys bow to me and let me just give you their heart instead of routing through the cross and all this pain are you seeing satan now he left jesus for a season he said i'm coming notice he never came directly to jesus again satan for you the next time we see satan coming he's coming to peter remember the goal is to jesus then the next time we see him again judas then the next time in jesus's weakness he now comes and manipulates his mind and jesus for the first time says father is it possible that you take this cup off me and jesus said no nevertheless nevertheless not my way if jesus prayed that prayer the father would have granted him yes because he always hears me jesus said it at the grave of lazarus i thank thee father because you always hear me i ha i had to pray this in open so that they will know i'm not my my open prayer is not an act of unbelief i'm saying it to minister to them i thank thee because you always hear me if jesus stopped at that prayer the father would have said well i cannot be a demon to usurp your will you have chosen to abort redemption so let it be and that would be it he still will be the word but there is no longer fruits of redemption he will still remain till today as the firstborn of the begotten but thank god he endured and he has now become not just the only begotten but the first begotten of the father we being the proceeds of that salvation and the bible says that we have now been called into glory and virtue are we together deception the third way deception can happen Ephesians 5 verse 6 God we have to run we have to run at least let's let's just stop somewhere here and then we'll pray let no man deceive you with what help me so the third instrument of deception is vain words you can use words that may look very spiritual expressions theologies spiritual communications that because they are deep and because they are voluminous in context and play around with your mind they may be termed weighty just because of the nature of them the bible says let no man deceive you with vain words so who are the people that bring this kind of deception men satan uses men to bring vain words just because a thing is spiritual does not mean it is accurate I can bring something and communicate what we call deep mysteries and in the end of it you are bamboozed by my theological dissertation but there is no substance in it to bring you victory we have to be careful let no man deceive you with vain words for because of this cometh the wrath of God on the children of disobedience the first level of satanic influence and hear me brothers and sisters for as long as you are in this earth you stand a chance to be deceived there must be a groundedness in the world that immunes you from deception the cure for deception among other things is to be sound in the world are we together now 
that the word of God is able to establish you. The Bible declares that I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So the word of God is able to give us wisdom. Wisdom. Number two, the second level of satanic influence is called manipulation and control. Manipulation and control. The first realm, the realm of deception, thrives on the strength of your senses you may want to write that satan plays around with your senses and the fact that you are human and that you process things through your five senses it becomes his advantage number two is manipulation and control this happens in the realm of the mind this is where strongholds are this is where all kinds of thoughts that are captive that keep men subject to the laws of satan Like we shared in Luke 22. Give us Luke 22 and verse 31. This was the encounter that Jesus had with Peter. Remember Luke 22. The Lord said to Simon, watch this. Simon, remember, was a disciple of Jesus. Although they had not experienced salvation in as much as we know, but the fact that they were in close touch with the word of God alone, should create some system of immunity yet satan penetrated all of that and came again through simon the chiefest of the apostles are we together he was forbidding jesus that jesus should not talk about death no jesus don't talk about the cross and everything and jesus was say oh simon you love me so much you are such a kind man jesus looked at him and said no this is not kindness this is this is the devil wants to use he's taking advantage now watch this are you seeing how manipulation and control happens it takes advantage of an attribute within you that may even be godly and satan can buy into it to become what you if you have compassion satan can use compassion to deceive you if you have intelligence satan can use your intelligence and overthrow you here he takes advantage of peter's compassion peter thought he was being sympathetic to jesus jesus you've done too much don't talk about death i'm going to miss you what does a good leader do oh I, I, you guys are all wicked people i'm talking of dying and none of you is crying peter come i love you in fact when i when, when as i'm going to heaven you will receive my mantle for being this compassionate Hear what Jesus says. Jesus looks at Peter with the tears running from his eyes and says, Get thee behind me. This is Jesus. Why didn't he look at the ground? Get no, no, no. He looks at Peter. Get thee behind me. Simon, Simon. He said, Satan had desired to do what? Have you. That he may sift you as wheat next verse but i have prayed for you so what is one of the secrets that can help you overcome demonic manipulation is the ministry of prayer he said watch and pray that you do not fall into temptation because you can't judge it just by the seeing of the eye you need to sustain an intelligence and a capacity to discern between good and evil i have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted he say use this same formula to strengthen your brethren that means intercede for them too because satan will come are you seeing why intercession is important in a church for the saints paul was praying that we we pray that that um, um prayers and supplications be offered for those in government for this and that that we may live a peaceable and a quiet life if you don't pray satan will sway people manipulation the realm of the mind now this is where it looks as though believers are possessed are we together because you see when you are i, I don't want to go into deliverance proper now that that's for series three are we together but you notice even here in koinonia and even you know right now as i've been talking you are seeing believers that you know love god but in the pro they themselves are shocked all of a sudden they start crying and talking things and saying things and you look at them and it's ah, but this person is a believer why is this person suddenly crying out and a spirit is leaving the person 
the physical manifestation of deliverance from whatever level looks the same it takes the eye of the spirit to know what is happening there so be careful so you don't blackmail believers and all of a sudden you see a mecca now standing and i touch his head and he's manifesting i says you see this guy these, these, these are the snakes that are singing in, in koinonia no no that kind of talk is is ignorance and arrogance and even stupidity sometimes don't blackmail believers just because of this and again we prophets and apostles i think we must be warned in jesus name because we are the ones who advocate this confusion just because you look and see a snake you just stand up and the guy now gets up and he's angry he knows he's not a snake he knows he's not a fool he loves god with all his heart he's surprised that he was manifesting and he's ashamed and he he goes back stigmatized by others who felt they didn't fall so that means they are sound not knowing the acuteness of the problem that is sitting on your head are we together god bless you so the realm of the mind manipulation and control this is where satan sways our thoughts ah. it is manipulation and control is so powerful it will shock you to know that the greatest victims of this realm are believers not unbelievers unbelievers are so flexible the sincerity of their heart doesn't even it allows them to find truth it is believers that are quick to look at men of god apostle joshua selman how can a young man like that have crowd like be careful low we are in the end times and you will think you are being sincere are we together now manipulation it is the devil that uses that realm to make somebody you love so much he now uses his face to you in a dream watch this somebody that loves you and is praying for you maybe your mother now appears and you go and say apostle prophet I saw my mother with a knife and he said I've been telling you for ages your mother is a witch and all of a sudden you carry axe and straight to your village and your mother said oh my dad I don't tell me anything so you are the one behind my pain manipulation both the counselor and the counselee both of them are under the siege of manipulation and control are we together now very important satan can manipulate you the moment he sees that you are get you are praying over a challenge in your life and he has seen that you have dedicated time to seek the lord he withdraws that challenge temporarily so that you will stop praying you will take you will take the withdrawal to be victory established then you will now say because he knows that you never see god until there is trouble so the moment there is a challenge and you set yourself to seek the lord you will see a temporary victory and he said ah that's it the dream has stopped and so you continue in that low level and think you are safe whereas he's waiting for a time where you go so down that he can strike you in a way that will matter is god giving us intelligence tonight manipulation do you know brothers and sisters i look at my own life let me be honest with you I look at my own life i look at my background and brothers and sisters i'm shocked at how well meaning my life was and how satan prevailed over my mind with doctrines with theories with all kinds of things it's amazing sometimes i sit down and i listen to men of god sometimes i attend conferences and i see people and i see very well-meaning believers but i am afraid sometimes even very anointed i am surprised at how they are victims to the siege of manipulations the very context of their doctrine will tell you that they are under manipulation There are all kinds of manipulations if i get up today for instance as a man of god and i believe that every other church and every other ministry in zaria is wasting god's time except me that state is already a sign of progress in an attack are you getting what i'm saying if i believe that I'm the most anointed man of God in Zaria. 
and that every other person especially our fathers our reverends here and there they are just talkatives wasting god's time the fact that i could accept that imagination why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing that i could conceive that vanity and agree in my heart and convince myself that that is the state is already a sign that i'm a victim of manipulation and control are you getting what i'm saying now dishonor to the body is a product of this kind of attack dishonor to constituted authority we are all men of god there's nothing you have that i don't have it's a sign of this level of attack listen very carefully the pride that comes with the result of spirituality is a product of this you will not know oh i come and i say look I, i've fasted for 40 days mr man how long do you fast he said well i managed to do two like <laughs> love is like this guy you are still i pray that god will bring you up oh, i'm going to go and pray and you think that just because you did that is a show of spirituality it could be that the devil is already wasting such an energetic spiritual process that should bless you but it's been corrupted by allowing him to prevail over your mind then on the other hand you see people praying and fasting and you look at them and say look all you guys need you see you see wisdom is profitable to direct this prayer prayer is, is all nonsense you are just praying stupid that state too is another version of manipulation are you getting the point now yes the fact that you use financial prosperity only as the chief proof of the word of god working for you is big deception i'm repeating this thing again i believe in prosperity we've taught a lot on success systems but learn this i think the church of the lord jesus christ needs to be weaned away from the deception that prosperity alone is proof that things are going on well in your life in terms of financial abundance no remember that the harlot upon the horse that mystery babylon can enrich the kings of the earth she's a merchant she can make men rich so just because i'm adding spiritual value to you and you sow into my life and then you come and see me taking tea and bread you can mistaken the availability of a lot of tea and bread to mean that just because i have tea and bread my life is all right it's impossible for me to be under any kind of siege and i myself can be deceived because the moment i want to think about my life an alert comes one million Laba. that means this thing is in place if it was not in place i mean where did the devil stop it from the bank let's be very careful a man's life does not constitute in the abundance of what he has i'm not against abundance now i hate poverty we all do as a ministry are we together but at the same time we must be careful there are many people whose lives are not all right just because they have a lot of money they just turn and look at other poor it's easy for a poor man to believe he's oppressed even if he's free he will not agree because the whiplash of the uh, what call, the economic tide that is swaying him left and right even when he has been delivered there is still something that is obvious and real and truthful when someone does not eat it's easy that's why sociologists will tell us that religion is the opium of the masses it's a system to motivate masses to keep them in bondage are we together manipulation and control number three find somewhere to stop here tonight is complete possession that means complete possession of your spirit your soul your body the entirety of your tripartite nature can come under the subjection of darkness this is called possession the Bible shows us people who were under that kind of thing. Mark chapter 5. The madman in Gadara. Do you know why he was a madman? In fact, he was not even a madman. We only called him mad simply because of the context of our civilization. The goal of the demons was not to make him mad. They were just too many in one person. And so his activity 
looked like that of somebody who is insane the goal was not insanity how could you have a legion of demons and be all right based on men's context of civilization imagine the war this one is saying cut this stone and so he just remained and notice how restful he was the bible says he would sit down in a cave quietly they came over onto the other side of the sea into the country of the gatherings it's a long reading we'll find somewhere to stop verse 2 let's continue and when he was come out of the ship listen carefully immediately there met out of the tombs a man with what you see that was not a madman it was just a man with too many unclean spirits a man with an unclean spirit verse 3 who had his dwellings among the tombs and no man could bind him no not with chains a man with flesh and blood yet metallic chains could not hold him because that he had often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man tame him verse 5 okay and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. six but when he saw Jesus afar off he ran and worshipped him now you would think that worship is homage no this is satan at work deception this uh, let me tell you this when satan knows you will overpower him his next assignment becomes to agree with you so that he will conquer you remember in the book of acts these are the holy men of god they have come to preach the glad tidings of the kingdom so that the day paul goes will say since we can't see paul we know that you are allies in ministry and the deception will continue be careful when the devil starts fraternizing with you it's a sign to allow that comfort to keep you there so that you will be struck eventually but when he saw jesus he ran and worshipped him verse 6 and he cried out with a loud voice and said what have i to do with thee jesus thou son of the most high god i adjure thee by god satan speaking through a man i adjure thee by god that thou torment me not eight oh dear i'm sorry mark is not giving us the context i'm looking for anyway we'll read to verse 9 and just stop there one of the synoptics that talks about the legions i thought that was where it would lead us for he said unto him come out of the man thou unclean spirit mark gave us an epistle of one spirit but we know i think um ah okay mark leaves it there too and he asks him what is thy name identify yourself now there has been a debate about this i don't i will talk about it next week talking to demons talking back to you we'll address it don't worry trust me my name is joshua selman justice will be done adequately are we together now and he asks him what is thy name and he answered saying my name is is that a name my name is what legion suddenly he now changes from i to we we are many don't be deceived that only one person is speaking we are many multiple spirits can exist within the same entity strange so your human spirit is not the only one that can be in you another spirit many spirits legions we are many verse 10 and he besought him much that he would not send them away from the country this is another discussion how can demons beg and say okay apostle cast us out of here but let's not go outside of new extension we have been in new extension for a long time look at the level of organization that the demonic kingdom have they know that there is jurisdiction of their influence and saying if you take us out of that jurisdiction there is no basis for dominion so leave us within our prescribed territory we will leave the individual you are interested in but leave the territory this is a message that many of us need to learn so it can leave you but is still around you waiting for a moment when you will grant access again jesus is the one teaching that when a demon leaves a man so demons can leave men 
let it not surprise you that demons leave men the bible says he goes through arid regions and not finding any place of habitation it will tell itself i will return back to my house you are born again he's still calling you his house you see how tenacious satan is my house and he comes and finds it swept clean but empty then it doesn't enter alone it gathers seven greater than itself look at that system of coordination seven greater than itself and returns and they comfortably stay in you so that the end of that man is even worse don't miss the next part three of this i will be teaching you why many supposed deliverance is incomplete and i'll be teaching you the imbalance of forever continuous deliverance why is it that you keep casting out the same demon forever you know because this is I, i'm already going ahead of myself i want to solve that problem there are many well-meaning believers who teach that deliverance is an ongoing continuous and forever process in a way they are right and in a way they are wrong when i teach you the dimensions of deliverance we will see what deliverance is ongoing and what deliverance is wrong the deliverance of transformation because there is a dimension of deliverance called transformation it is an ongoing process christ being the standard on, and the reference so in that way it is correct but deliverance like a continual exorcism casting away of spirit beings the fact that they continue finding expression is a sign that what that person needs is not just to cast the demons away are you getting me now all of that we're going to deal with next week we have to find a place to tie it today levels of satanic influence number one deception we're just doing a recap number two manipulation and control number three complete possession look up please of all these three levels the only one that the saints are by the default state of redemption immune from are we together is complete possession because he that is joined to christ according to the authority of scripture is one spirit not two spirits living in one the same way a husband and a wife have become one are we together now you have become one it's a sharing together to understand that concept you have to understand an old jewish practice called salt covenant uh, the salt covenant was a way of binding um, union between two people or two neighboring countries and they would use salt are we together you would bring your salt i will bring my salt and we'll pour it together in a vessel and mix it the condition for us to close that covenant is if everyone can pick his own salt out are we together so our redemption is in the similitude of that kind complete possession by the authority of scripture i do not believe that a believer can be completely possessed spirit soul and body although we generally call it possession simply because of the character of the manifestation are you getting where the error comes from now so like i said if i pray we're going to start praying shortly and many of you even as you are listening to me now will find out that you start manifesting and sometimes in the manifestation you will say things and do things that many times can look like you are possessed are we together and if you do not discern with understanding you may even deceive yourself to think you are possessed i've seen many people join the line after koinonia and then they ask me apostle am i a witch i said what is the meaning of that he said please i'm tired of everybody around saying i'm a witch even a witch listen carefully even a witch is not entirely possessed hmm. you see that that thing we call witch and wizards no There are spirit entities that are not human. Listen very carefully. I hope you know that human beings are not the only species of beings on earth. We know that, right? That there are other species. Make reference to my message, the, the seed, I think the seed and the woman also, are seven days prayer and fasting. I did a little teaching on that. That there are human beings on earth that are not pure humans. 
the salvation is not for them they cannot access the redemptive work of jesus otherwise probably the angels would have re repented salvation is not for angels salvation is not for any other beings in fact in fact listen very carefully the scope of salvation starts as as far as the authority of scripture reveals to us starts from the adam the man who originated our human civilization if you were before adam there was another system are we together it was not redemption through the blood of the eternal son of god because when according to apostle peter when jesus went to hell the ones he preached to were not those who were at the pre-adamites we know that by those who resurrected with him are we together now the bible says prophets of old that resurrected and walked the streets of jerusalem then having ascended to the father as the firstborn of the begotten to finish the substitutionary sacrifice there the atonement he now came and they all went together are we together now so we know that it is true that that uh, apostle peter lets us know that jesus preached the gospel to the departed saints in hell there because they were partakers but if you were not of adam that's why jesus is called the second adam so it starts from there there are other beings on earth that cannot be partakers of salvation but they are on earth satan has fraternized with them and he's still using them are you getting what i'm saying now so you can find some of these entities the fact that they are not of this earth does not mean that they cannot find expression in materials but material bodies and then you will also see them manifest in material bodies i'm not talking of entering a human being they themselves as an entity sustaining a body that is material but it's not a human being those are the kinds that we that's the classic proof of wizardry are we together now it's not just an individual who has been possessed there is a dimension of that but there are beings on earth that you see they are humanoid in their context but they are not human beings they are not progenitors from from adam salvation they can't receive salvation it is this kind that the bible says spare not a witch to live You will be blessed with a lot of balance um, if there's something I, I want to reserve it till part three because as i just said that thing, many of you now are afraid okay so if they don't leave you are trying to say they die so what does that mean because many of you have seen ministries uh, respectfully great ministries like mountain of fire and all of that sometimes you see them say die and then you're now saying so what is it and men of god have laughed in sarcasm to mean spirits don't die we will find out how spirits die because spirits die <laughs> hmm. jesus the greatest strength of satan the one factor that makes satan look powerful over lives is one word the flesh write it down the flesh next or next week or whenever is the next time we'll take it we'll start from there the flesh i have to stop now no matter what level of deliverance you go through every other agency of demonic activity is dependent on the strength of the flesh to walk meaning you are truly not free when you are still alive to the flesh are we together now this is where the burden of laborious continual deliverance in in futility comes from an attempt to continue to cast out spirits cast out spirits cast out spirits and then the saints or the individuals that are now delivered continue to remain and dwell in the domain of the flesh let me tell you when you dwell in the domain of the flesh you will get to a point where the spirits on their own can go without being casted out and come because the gateway a stronghold has been created by your affinity to the flesh and that's why sometimes they mock we men of god before you say in jesus name they have gone and the person is happy i say hey, to mean you are powerful and is waiting he knows 
so people continue receiving temporary results temporary breakthrough temporary deliverance temporary this but there is a way that god can grant us grace to establish victory once and for all that you win today and win tomorrow you stand strong today and stand strong tomorrow then you now will not be the person in need of deliverance you will carry this dimension because you will now you will know you are delivered because you are a possessor it remains with you are we together so now you can turn to others and begin to communicate the dimension of the life and the power that god has brought to you are we blessed rise up on your feet Rise up, please. You reign, you reign. Hello, King. You reign, you reign, you reign. Hello, King. You reign, you reign, you reign. As we have thrown his majesty over all the works of darkness. One minute we are going to pray just two prayer points i like you to lift up your voice and declare that in the name of jesus i'm walking in the experience of the victory the victory that the blood of jesus the victory that the blood of jesus the victory that the death of jesus the victory of his triumphant resurrection lift your voice and declare Never will it become a prophetic reality. It is becoming my experience. Victory over generational curses. Victory over yokes and bondages. Lord, I declare, Lord, I declare, complete victory over the works of darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know that I've not I've not taught it the next time we're doing deliverance and I'll be teaching you on all of the elements. But one of the mysteries that produce true deliverance is the mystery of the blood. Are we together? It's one of the three witnesses. The Bible says, and there are three witnesses that bear three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. It says that there are three witnesses. This is where the problem is, the earth. It says the Spirit, the water, 
and the blood. Are we together? The Bible guarantees us that the blood of Jesus speaketh. The blood of Jesus speaketh. That means you can cause the blood to advocate. The blood of Jesus is an advocate. There is the advocacy ministry of the blood. The same way Cain killed Abel. Abel the man had died. But Abel the blood was speaking. And he cried. And God himself had to say no something is happening. Although the man had died. But the blood is still speaking. I like you to engage the blood. And say in the name of Jesus. I declare that I'm a partaker of the ministry of the blood i invoke the advocacy of the blood open your mouth and speak open your mouth and speak over every pattern over every curse over every yoke against you I will pass over when I see the blood upon the pronouncements in your family I will pass over lift your voice and invoke the blood we declare that the blood speaks we declare the mystery of God's mercy the blood speaks the priesthood of Jesus that is after the order of Melchizedek higher than the Aaronic priesthood higher than the priesthood of Noah we declare in the name of Jesus Shabakato Sabarata the blood speaks the blood speaks over the ordinance of our fathers the blood speaks Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help that lady, please. The Bible says, listen carefully. Just help those under the anointing. Something is happening here. The Bible says we have been called out of every tribe, out of every tongue. Remember, I'll be sharing with you every other power on earth cannot walk without the sun. The sun and the moon are the two elements that power every activity that happens on the earth. That's why the psalmist said the sun shall not smite you. The sun does not smite in itself. But I can take advantage of the sun. Every activity demonically on earth. Without the, when there was darkness upon the earth, there was no demonic activity until light returned then satan now returned with his activity too when there was all through the period of darkness the only entity we see is the spirit of god we never hear of any demon jumping the moment the sun was withdrawn and the moon was withdrawn so the psalmist said the sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night witchcraft thrives only with the sun that's why Jesus himself is called the son of righteousness that can arise with healing. Thou shall not be. He said the son shall not smite you. That means for as long as there is sun and there is moon, I can do something on earth that will tap the power of the sun to fight you. That will tap the power of the sun to spare you away. Watch this. Hold on. Joseph goes to bed and has a dream. And here's his dream. I saw the sun. I saw the moon. And I saw 11 stars. Remember all of them are lights. They are just different kinds of light. Bowing to me. When Jacob had this. Jacob said so. Me. Jacob called himself the sun. So I will bow. And my wife 
who gets her glory from me like the moon from the sun and then your brothers who are also stars will bow to you Jacob was worried the sun bowing the sun can bow the moon can bow even the stars that have been sent to signify times and seasons can bow what is this power that can make the sun bow by next week I'll share with you how God delivered me you know I've been telling you what I went through but I've not shared with you how I came out this is what I want to share with you Kai look let me tell you you don't know victory till you understand the mysteries of the spirit you will smash the gates of darkness he said he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder that you will walk through the enemy's camp and take your possession and lift it like this and turn to Satan and say I dare you I will show you a man who made the sun and the moon to obey him I'm happy his name is called Joshua Hi. <laughs> watch this watch this every time God wanted to bring redemption to men he didn't just bless them he did something to the sun and the moon to realign them to their advantage Hezekiah was about to die and when God turned his life he said as a sign I will do something to the sun and move it a particular degree so that the power that would have killed you that has shifted the sun to that degree to allow it kill you will no longer be able to touch you Joshua looked at the sun and said Jericho is not an ordinary city they are fortified because they have done something even with the sun and the moon and he said son there is war about to be fought and because of that stand still it's not just because of light sun stand still moon hold your peace and all of a sudden Jericho suddenly became afraid the diviners in Jericho said this thing is not working again they said what happened they said someone has done something to the sun Jericho was close and they were afraid the, the nation of Israel were not fighting therefore the, the Bible said they were close none went out none entered they said we're in trouble the sun and the moon you will see why herbalists do all kinds of things and drop a mirror on the ground and use a sun and or the sun and make stupid enchantments and we laugh and say oh it doesn't matter and all of a sudden you will now see why the psalmist categorized evil according to what the sun does and the night there are arrows that fly only by day the what empowers them is the sun there is the destruction that wasted in noonday once it is 12 on the dot that destruction can start be interested in what I'm sharing because this ministry that you enjoy is standing on the wings of these mysteries there is what can subdue causes yes it is the blood of Jesus yes it is all of this but the dynamics of that operation brothers and sisters the powers that hold Africa are powerful don't trivialize it Jesus is above all I don't in any way demean the power of God if I did I would not be standing here if I did the this koinonia will not be standing here if I'm faking what I tell you I will not open my mouth to declare this because that means I won't be able to sleep this night too who can stand against the Lord no one can no one will
make sure we are still on that exercise of night prayers I know some of you have not been doing it don't do it as a ritual but I want you to receive grace to do it with understanding forget about what happens just do what I ask you to do it doesn't matter whether even if you are praying and a demon appears, don't worry you are about to see a dimension of the wisdom and the power of God conquer the realm of the flesh are we together we are going to receive grace to pray but I want to pray for you right now please just help anyone under the anointing just two minutes and then we are done in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit I, my God I'm seeing a sword right now I declare every hold of darkness Shabakato Salata even in this series help them Jesus look at what is happening there in the name of Jesus you know my voice I was once your victim but tonight has come as one who has been given the keys of David by the mercies of God I declare right now in the name of Jesus everyone here under the sound of my voice who is under any kind of siege right now be free in the name of Jesus 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 every family under any kind of siege that is mocking your Christian integrity and making God's word look like a lie Shabakato Kasata Embreketo Kashabalakata Reketo Katosh Shabaskata Shata Rakato Shabariata Kata In the name of Jesus Fire, I'm seeing fire That's what I'm seeing from heaven Shabokoto Skabariata Man Takoto Shegetegete Embrekete Loko Shabarika Maprakato Skaria I'm praying for you in the spirit Sheketo Koto Shamana in the name of Jesus I cause the plague of witchcraft I cause the plague of witchcraft in the name of Jesus every voice speaking against everyone's destiny the Bible says blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us. The Bible says he nailed it to the cross. I declare and I decree by the substitutionary sacrifice of the eternal begotten of the Father. I cause every power that is not of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I reverse any ordinance in the spirit over every individual over every family i command a reversal now in the name of jesus and the sons of jacob shall possess their possession let me pray for you everything that must enter your hand the open doors that the blood of Christ release. Help them, please. Everything you have seen in the realm of the spirit, God has shown you dreams that you are a possessor. God has shown you dreams. Your children, your breakthrough, your lifting, your speed, your job, your marriage. In the name of Jesus, I release it to your hands now. Become a possessor. I release it to your hands now. Become a possessor. And I pray for you. The Bible says when you catch a thief, he won't just restore what he stole because he has wasted your time by stealing. Can I speak restoration? Let me tell you, there are many of us who have lost things some you have lost time Masha Makata Kabata Joshua said son go back move go back I prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus I prophesy as one sent in the name that is above all names 
everything the devil took away from you I command the restoration now I command the restoration now whatever you have lost in time I speak to you between today and Friday coming I pray that someone will have the faith to believe this prayer may my God the God of Jeshurun arise and surprise you arise and surprise you we call him Ebenezer the helper of Israel I declare oh God arise oh God arise the hands that lifted me will uphold me to the end I will not be afraid there is a hand that lifted me will uphold me to the end I will not be hallelujah years ago I had a conversation we're about to pray with a gentleman and he asked me a very honest question he said apostle I've come for Koinonia and I've seen the crowds of people and he asked a question he said can you reproduce these results and I said that's not me to answer you are asking time not me keep watching and I think two weeks ago he sent me a text you know just joking I'm, I'm just saying it and he's just sent a text and he said apostle you are dangerous I say I'm not dangerous the laws of God are dangerous it is not me it is the laws of God whoever will keep these truths it will work for you are you getting what I'm saying even if you are afraid of yourself trust his laws and watch them shock you and make a wonder out of your life brothers and sisters listen to me in a few minutes now we're going to begin to pray and many of you will stand and watch your life change as if it's magic it is not just because a man who is anointed is standing before you there is a system in the kingdom we make our boast first in the Lord and then in the power of his might his might the power of his might the power that is released when his laws operate those who don't understand will look at these things and think he's boasting it's not boasting it's true the predictability of God's principles hallelujah I challenge you today that much more than the miracles you are receiving you must trust God to go back and say Lord teach me your ways we reign in this kingdom we're about to pray now i want to show you a very dangerous scripture that god opened my eyes to brothers and sisters if god does not open your eyes to see how a thing works you may never know do you know that in every challenge that you have right now a way of escape is there but it takes god to open your eyes psalm 77 turn there let me show you something psalm 77 and verse 19 psalm 77 verse 19 give us from amplified if it's possible lion of judah my trust is in you alpha and omega my trust is in you i am that i am my trust is in you tonight i put them on you my trust is in you it says your way in delivering your people was through the sea listen carefully the same sea that was an obstacle it said their way of escape was inside that water inside that trouble it says and your path through the great waters how can you be in trouble and god says in that trouble that's where your answer is but it takes your eyes to see it god hides a formula in your pain and keeps it there until revelation opens you to it it says your way of delivering your people was through the sea the same sea he said that your path through the water yet 
you pass through it and cover it and nobody can trace your footsteps this one give us king james again it will take revelation for you to know how can i look at him water challenges and great waters he said thy way is in the sea in that rain challenge is a formula that can make you a landlord but it will take the spirit of revelation in that sickness that brought you to koinonia is hidden a mystery that can bring you into the healing anointing it says thy way is in the sea and thy path in the great waters and thy footsteps are not known god what kind of god are you you do something and cover it so no man can just look and say ah I, uh. but when he opens your eyes all of a sudden you will discover that so the water can part i never knew and all of a sudden there will be dry ground and you walk to it and the egyptians will think and god will cover it and say i don't open it for everybody it is a way but not for everybody are we together these are some of the deep mysteries about the anointing sometimes you see me give you instructions that don't make sense shout jesus keep quiet it does you will try it and it won't work it's a mystery there is a way in it there is a pathway that when god opens your eyes to the systems of the kingdom then you can see things that don't make sense and make wonders out of them god is speaking to someone here that the prayer you are praying the answer is already within your environment all it takes is for your eyes to see Hagar was punished by Sarah. The Bible says she was in the wilderness dying of test. The young lad cried to heaven. When an angel appeared, all of a sudden they saw an oasis bringing water. The water was there, but her eyes could not see. The ways of God. And let me tell you, this is why we come to, how, to the house of God. Because there is something about the corporate gathering of God. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Go ahead and read. Thy ways, O God, where is it? Is found in your sanctuary. When we come here, it says in your sanctuary, in your house, you have, you have ordained a place that when we meet, you will show us a way. When God put this miracle service and called this ministry and put all of these things, it's not just a ritual. There is a mystery about the sanctuary he has ordained. That every time you come before God, he must open a way. So don't carry your challenges and come and you are wondering and say, I went to every church. I don't know what the church you went to believe. But in this sanctuary, there is a way there is a way i dare to tell you there is a way man of god i have been in i've gone everywhere with all due respect i don't know where you went to but there is a way in the sanctuary solomon dedicated a place and said lord let me tie a covenant to this sanctuary if any man prays and turns this direction not for the sake of their faith for the covenant in this place answer them when they were about to kill daniel in the days of that of, of nebuchadnezzar daniel opened the gate and faced jerusalem he, he was afraid he couldn't depend on his faith he opened the door and said lord i engage the covenant that covenant that solomon made with the temple in jerusalem it is not only a man that can bring miracles a place can be anointed to birth miracles it was in a place that jacob went to sleep he never met a man but he met a place and that night the heavens were open and he saw a ladder that connected the heavens he said this is the house of god this is the gates of heaven tonight i want to stir up faith many of you have come you have made sacrifices pastor femi thank you thank you so so much praise the lord many of you have come from several places you have made sacrifices please don't come here wasting your time and don't come here wondering let's see what god will do already i can answer you you won't get anything 
already let me let me be honest with you because god is not a magician but there are people that come here determined and say lord i have seen you in this place i can't go back this way that something must shift in my life something must change in my life not all of you may be trusting god for sickness for healing you know but many of us are trusting god for one thing or the other i like you to believe there is a way in the sea i bring you a word there is a way this kingdom operates by mysteries the bible says there is no temptation given but that which is common to man you are not the first to have house rent issue you are not the first to have financial issues listen carefully you are not the first to have academic issues you are not the first to have excuse me spiritual issues you are not the first but though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river. That's a part of this song I like. Though we are few, there are witnesses. There are people who have been healed. There are people who God changed their lives overnight. There may not be many, but they are on earth, testifiers of His faithfulness. As a testament that if God did it before, he can do it again and this is the song we'll be singing forever oh is the lord oh is the lord listen it is our confidence in god and our confidence in his ways that gives us the audacity to gather people and say come he will change you without the presence of god and access to the ways of god we are we are scammers we are not we are not just liars we are scammers why do you gather people and tell them come we dare you to come we call a solemn assembly not only because we know god by the privilege of his grace we have found grace with him and he has made us stewards of the mysteries ephesians chapter 3 this will be the last scripture ephesians chapter 3 verse 2 from verse 2 it says if ye have heard paul is speaking of the dispensation of grace of the grace of god which is given me to you what for your sake how that by revelation verse 3 he made known unto me how did paul know it by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote afore in few words verse 4 whereby when you read another word is whereby when you experience it you may know the basis ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ verse 5 a mystery that has been hidden in other ages let me tell you some of the things we are doing although they are spiritual although they are biblical they are mysteries that have been hidden they are there the same way many people swam through the red sea although there was a way it took a generation of men to be open to that mystery there are many mysteries that control results that have not been routed by many but the bible says that in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets how by the spirit by the spirit it was a revelation that god gave me that people write their requests and come and drop here it's not something that i copied from anywhere it's a revelation stupid though but look at the testimonies that have come out from it are we blessed now god's servant bishop david oyedeko was given the revelation of feet worship a revelation that had not been known to anybody people read it and all of a sudden the testimonies that come out of it people had communion people take communion in orthodox churches and different churches and just take it even while they are drunk but somebody came with a light about communion 
and all of a sudden people take communion now and cancers just die there are mysteries brothers and sisters there are many people that never knew that the house of god is powerful praise the lord are we together so you must understand that god in this season wants to shift you but you won't just shift you just by saying shift there are mysteries tonight i bring you a word there is a way in the sea hallelujah there is a way there is a way there is something god can do about your finances there's something god can do about your family situation you left fire on the mountain and came back you wait until the red sea parts and god will rubbish pharaoh tonight in your presence rise up on your feet begin to thank the Lord for what you have heard tonight cry for the grace to be faithful go ahead cry for the grace to be faithful cry for the grace to be faithful Lord grant me the grace to be faithful grant me the grace to stay as you lift me grant me the grace not to rush seasons in my life grant me the grace grant me the grace hallelujah just pray one prayer lord change my story visit me tonight lift your voice and pray pray with faith change my story visit me visit me tonight hallelujah tonight is an unusual service because time has gone we're going to be very very fast very very fast at that um, like I told us we're going to start praying for the sick we'll start by praying for the sick and um, now this is how we're going to do it because of because of those of you outside don't worry you don't worry wherever you are you will be attended to are we together you will be attended to so hold on before i ask the people to come you don't have to just cooperate with the ushers if they need you to do anything just just it's a temporary inconvenience we're doing this just to be able to manage time and to do all that we have to do hallelujah praise the lord now please hold on let's let's not be distracted those of us who are trusting God for healing is a miracle service it's not just limited to healing but we're going to pray for the sick now now we're going to do this very fast and um, please those that will be ministering let's let's do it very fast it's not in how long listen let me tell you something about the anointing it's not just in how long you are touched or the frequency just a touch is enough for the anointing the same way a small drug can step into your body and that's it the wonders are done i'd like you to believe god to touch you change your life whether it's a blood disease whatever it is let's agree with you hallelujah we'll do that very very fast while we are doing that please um if you have come with your requests ushers um please help them pr department you can join them protocol let's just join and see how we can make this very fast so that at the same time we are collecting the prayer requests remember it's not a ritual um when it's time when they come to you you can hand over the request if you are yet to write yours you can quickly do that those online following us from whatever nation you can just connect your requests are already there and we're praying the power of god will touch it there too hallelujah praise the lord please i like you to be very intentional 
I know that most times we do this at the miracle services, but be careful lest you make a ritual out of this. And then at the same time, waste your time. I have seen the power and the glory of God um, upon my life and upon this ministry in, in ways that, that are humbling, in ways that are powerful. Expect a testimony. Please refuse that you're not going back the way you came. No matter what the medical situation is, remember I told you there is a way in the sea. There is a way. Hallelujah. When I do that, um, we'll finish it and then we can now minister deliverance and just prophesy so that we are able to make time. Praise the Lord. Father, we're gathered tonight by your wisdom and your power. Lord, we're about to minister to those who are sick. And Lord, we trust your power to heal. We trust your power to heal to the uttermost in the name of Jesus. Anoint my hands, anoint every man and woman of God who will be ministering to the sick. Let there be the hearing of faith. Let there be the working of miracles. Do this and glorify yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Uh, Father, we give you all the praise. Let your power flow. Let miracles begin in this place. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Please make sure that while you submit your prayer request, be in the attitude of prayer. If I were you, I'll be praying in the spirit. Don't be distracted just because we are taking our time to pray for the sick. God bless you. Deserve the glory and the honor. So we lift our hearts and worship as we bless your holy name. Yes, you deserve the glory. The honor. Yes, Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great. Yes, there is no one else. So we lift our hands, so we lift our hands and worship as we praise.
by the name Fade away Strong! 
say after me in the name of Jesus. We are praying now, please. We are praying. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every force from the pit of hell standing against my lifting tonight I challenge you lift your voice and begin to pray everyone lift your voice and begin to pray every force every force nothing will stop your lifting Every song shall be broken. You will the victor's run. Say in the name of Jesus, every recurrent pattern in my life right now, I declare you destroyed. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Challenge every recurrent pattern. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Every recurrent pattern in the name of Jesus, every recurrent pattern, Papo Sabalaka to Pashabren Negadea. In the name of Jesus, say after me, in the name of Jesus. Every dimension of grace apportioned for me tonight, I declare that I must step into it. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every dimension of grace, every dimension of grace, Every dimension. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Make sure you are praying every dimension, every dimension, every dimension. Say in the name of Jesus, Father, let your fire fall upon my life, upon my family, and destroy every planting that is not of god lift your voice and pray let your fire the visitation of your fire the visitation of your fire upon my life upon my life pray Let your fire fall upon my life. Let your fire bring a separation. Lift your hands. I'm about to pray for you now. We are never doing the same thing every time I rebuke devils. There are lives and destinies 
that are under the yokes of darkness it's time for the devil to give up are we together are you ready to shout that name that is above all names let me tell you i want you to be childlike tonight and just follow these instructions and watch the wonder working power of god in your life at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus everywhere and as you shout that name the sword of the lord will pierce through every root of every challenge and begin to command victory for you are we together now especially for those of you who are coming here for the first time i'm ministering deliverance now every yoke of darkness that has tied anyone's life as you shout this name may the visitation of that fire are you ready now one two three I command the fire, the fire of the Spirit. Bring them up, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, every altar and everything, every high thing that is not of God, I curse you now. I curse you now. I curse you now. hallelujah i think the ground is good enough you can bring them in the name of jesus i'm praying now i'm still praying anyone's destiny that is under siege right now i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i'm seeing i'm seeing like bolts of fire falling on people if it falls on you your destiny is opening up lord where are they i stretch my hands may the visitation of fire Open destinies now. Shake it to katakata. Open destinies now. Open destinies now. Inside, outside. Open destinies now. Open destinies now. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a horn and I'm seeing fire burning it. Please be sensitive. This is a symbol of authorities that sit over lives and families. He said in Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18, What's yes thou? He said four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Judah, so that no man does lift his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. Lift your heads. I'm praying right now. In the name of Jesus, the fire of God is falling on people inside and outside. In the name of Jesus, anyone here, Shabo Sekatos Kabariakata, under any kind of demonic siege, at the count of three, that horn, that symbol of authority that has tied your family, that has tied your life, it is uprooted. One, two, three. I release that fire now. I release that fire now. I release that fire now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, Pako Seketo Shatariata, Embreke Teke Toka Sata, Shabeke Teleke Tabata. I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, anyone here whose life is under siege, be delivered now. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to visit the issue of barrenness. But then he's using physical barrenness as a prophetic symbol for productivity so that you are not surprised if you are a man and the anointing still visits you the womb is the place where seed is planted that womb can be anything a woman's womb is just a type and a shadow of a system of increase there are people a barren woman is a woman whose womb cannot receive and multiply seed the way it is physically that's how it is spiritually you receive the word but it never produces it's barrenness you receive finances but it never multiplies it's barrenness lift your hands as i pray listen many people many people are going to be delivered from just this prayer you will be surprised to know that many of your requests are tied to this one prayer lift your hands i'm praying now that in the name of Jesus ah, I tell you all I see is just fire that's what I'm seeing every spirit responsible for barrenness in anyone's life right now 
by the fire of the Holy Ghost I declare be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost overflow one I'm seeing three people I'm praying now I know because of time we can't let you come in but I'm seeing three people two are ladies one is a gentleman this prayer is for you there is an anointing as I'm speaking that is coming overflow one on people outside the Lord is bringing massive deliverance barrenness is a dangerous thing listen whatever you give a barren person is as well as wasting your time because it cannot grow it cannot multiply Jesus saw the fig tree it was taken from the earth taken from the earth but it was not producing in the name of Jesus I'm still praying that prayer again that any life here that Satan has rendered barren I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I decree and declare be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness hallelujah Kemi, who is Kemi? Kemi. Um, I may not, maybe I may just talk to one or two people. Kemi, you are wearing red. It's like, it's a guy called Kemi. Who is that? You are wearing red. What's your name? Uh -uh, I didn't, I'm saying, this is, I'm saying, I know that Kemi is a lady's name. It's not a guy. I will pray for you. It's your hunger. This is, you are wearing red. What's your name? Your name is Kemi. Yes, sir. You are wearing red. I'll pray for you. But gentlemen, you are here. There is a hunger that you carry. Listen, you came from uh, I'm seeing Cross River. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cross River. Cross River. Cross River. Yes, you sir. came. Yes, sir. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. Listen to me. Yes, sir. You came because of a hunger. Yes, sir. You truly get an anointing. Yes, sir. But you see, this message I preach was for you. Yes, you heard what I'm saying? Yes, this running around to want to do ministry by force is not the way it works. The Lord Himself, He will give you an anointing, but He will give you direction. What you need is an encounter with the word and direction, but you will never go back the same. Receive that anointing, a new dimension, a new season. My dear, there is a spirit of prophecy upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stir up that spirit, that dimension. I open you to a realm where you begin to see and hear the sounds of the spirit. In the name of Jesus, as I'm praying this, I'm seeing number 11, the same thing that came on this lady. The anointing of the spirit is looking for 11 people. There is the spirit of prophecy. Where are they? I stretch my hands right now. 11 people. 11 people scattered inside and outside. In the name that is above all names. Receive that spirit. You need it. I stir it up from your spirit man. I stir it up from your spirit man. The grace for prophecy. Makatos Kabarakata. Sons and daughters stepping into dimensions of prophecy. Some of you, you have only had dreams. Only dreams, but I shift you to dimensions of visions. Prophetic visions. You will never be the same. I'm still praying this. I'm still praying this. There are people, this is your call. But no anointing has ever stirred it. In the name of Jesus, I shift you in the spirit. Into that anointing. The very anointing. The seat of the prophetic. I move you by grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. I activate it. I activate it. That dimension. I'm praying I don't know why God is moving this way there are people the call of God is upon your life but you don't know it you don't know that the call of God is upon your life but tonight as a token the Spirit of God is visiting you whether you know it or not Lord where are they I stretch my hands now if the hand and the mandate of God is upon your life 
for your destiny in the area of the fivefold. I declare, let the anointing of the Spirit locate you. As it locates you, the Lord begins to prepare you. Where are they? Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Abaraka toka 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 ta. Shabenda salaba seketa subria katali katosh. Hallelujah. There is a dangerous spirit. Our time is up. Hold on. But there is a spirit that I want to rebuke now. I just saw written in the air rejection. Hold on. Many of you do not know the reason why good things never reach you. You stand, you are watching and an opportunity come. Rejection is not just a state, it's a spirit. Lift your hands. Don't pray, don't do anything, just lift your hands. Hallelujah. That's the instruction the Lord is giving me. Just lift your hands, just do what I'm asking you to do. In the name of Jesus, many of you will be surprised now. There are people, it's like a yoke. I'm seeing like cowries, these cowries that they use. That's what I'm seeing. And in the name of Jesus Christ, as the power of God is smashing that rubbish, that's how many people who have been despised, been despised. The Bible says where you have been forsaken so that no man passes through you. It says you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. Right now I stretch my hands from the front to the back overflow one two three the roadside and online if there is anyone here under the siege of the spirit of rejection right now in the name of jesus in this silence may the anointing of the spirit begin to bring deliverance right now i'm praying it's happening right now taking away that spirit from your life please be sensitive we are doing a quick walk rejection 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 by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Rejection. I command that spirit to leave. I'm still praying. I command that spirit to leave. I command that spirit to leave. Alongside with this, there are people. Bad luck. Good things must always turn to evil when it, hold, when it enters your hand. No matter what it is. If they give you money, something must go bad. A good opportunity it must be destroyed. You enter a relationship, something must happen. I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus. Makos Kabara Katosh Kele Katosiata. If there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is under this kind of siege, here at this miracle service, fire, 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 fire. I release the fire of the spirit right now from the front to the back, inside, outside. I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. Keep your hands lifted and pray. Mighty things are happening in the spirit. I ask us to pray a prayer that the Lord put in my heart. Patterns. I'm still seeing it again. There are some of you, the same thing happens to every member of your family. At certain seasons, everything must happen. Either somebody dies or someone doesn't marry straight and correct. You must have a child before you get married. Or something, someone will rape you. Someone raped your mother. Someone will rape some kind of nonsense patterns. In the name of Jesus. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. Lord, I pray that as your people shout that name, every pattern that happened to the fathers that is about to replay itself in the life of your people let it be broken at the count of three one two three i declare those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now hallelujah the spirit of delay god is taking delay from someone's life that's what i'm seeing god is taking delay i'm seeing it going delay 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 not everybody but i'm seeing god is it will surprise you after this miracle service the kind of speed that your life will enter 
délai. Alléluia. My dear, come. This come. This is your first time here. Where are you coming from? You're coming from Abuja. Yes, I want to pray for you. You had the prayer I just said we should pray. Yes. That prayer was was for you. Don't be embarrassed. Eh? There is a spirit of delay that must live your life. You are a great lady, but I see delay. Come. It's a demonic spirit. And if you are not delivered and you get up and go to Abuja just like that, it will be as if you did not come before the presence of God. But I lay my hands upon your head. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of delay, I call you by name. Let this lady go now. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, go now. Live her life forever. In the name of Jesus. That lady wearing lime cloth, you, this one, come quickly, please. Look at me. Salvation has come to your family. The month of June. Look at me. The month of June, I'm prophesying by the Spirit, is the month for your family. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's changing everything. Everything completely by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. I'm hearing a name, Doris. I'm hearing a name Doris Doris who is Doris I'm hearing a name Doris Doris are you Doris your name is Doris I'm going to pray for you your name too is Doris that's your baby I will pray for you look at me look at me shout Jesus My dear, look at me. Witchcraft. I'm stretched. The Lord is just saying I should stretch my hands in front of you. I stretch my hands and I declare. I'm seeing an altar catching fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare it by the Spirit. I stretch my hands. That's what the Lord is saying I should do. I stretch my hands. It catches fire now. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. From Congo, hold my hands. Say shame and reproach. Shame and reproach is taken from my life. Is taken from my life forever. Forever. Say it again. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Victory belongs to Jesus. Shame and reproach is taken from your life forever in the name of Jesus Christ by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Shame and reproach is taken. From, hold on, I'm not done with that. I decree and declare that shame and reproach is taken from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's father has not been paid for 11 years. I'm seeing, I don't know what the condition is, but I'm seeing at, at 11 years or so, your father has not been paid. It's something they have been pursuing. Please make sure you are honest. Who is that? Come. Your dad, where is he? He's in Lagos. You too? Where is he? Do you believe that if I pray for you, a miracle will happen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we make it happen by the Spirit of the living God. I decree and declare that between now and the next 90 days, let there be a miracle. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why are you all coming? Your parents. 
no don't I, if, if i pray most of you is not it's not that word you are just coming just because you want it may be related in the name of jesus i'm i'm just praying for you as i'm touching you, you see let me let me tell you something brothers and sisters you see this touch you see this touch just this touch you see there is power in it it's just that we are very carnal people do you understand after service you can hug me and jump on me but now what is on me is what makes this touch different you see that you can you can have it is not just a touch maybe a touch for jamboree no 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 you can i can lay my hands on you right and then something can come upon you i can lay my hands upon you and then your life will change sometimes you see me just speak and you think it as as i pray like this you see watch your life and see what it becomes are, are you getting what i'm saying now that's 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 the point the word of god that you can't see it does not mean it's not resting on you when it rests on you like a hen over her, her the eggs it will stay there until there is a performance this thing you see is not just power it's authority it's authority there is authority in the spirit it's not just power it's authority are you, are you getting what i'm saying now so it is it is a grace it's a gift that god can give a man he said for i am a man under authority i say to one go it's just that many of us just sit down and we keep watching I, be, the fact that you are here within this vicinity alone let me tell you whether you are inside or outside your life will never never be the same if i never get to touch you it's just that we are carnal we are carnal so we just feel that until you make contact with the man of god your life will not no 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 i don't have to give you a word of knowledge the anointing that you see this anointing through words through words i can speak to you like this the word of god carries the anointing do you understand it's not just until maybe you, you make contact and lay hands and some of those things are just psychological it is the power of god as i'm speaking over your life if you believe you will be surprised are we together now yes a miracle service we may not have all the time to minister the way we want to but this word if all i do here is to just come and speak i told you about the creative dimension of prophecy men are made by the prophetic word that is on them what is on you is what compels creation to respond to you in a certain way a man can lay hands on you and not lay anything everybody ministers according to the dimension of his grace my dear this lady looking at me come the lord is saying i should tell you what happened to queen esther in the bible will happen to you i don't know who you are but the lord is saying i should tell you that what happened to adasa queen esther in the bible i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus christ so brothers and sisters i like your heart to be open the if you come here and you are prayed for i lay hands on you and you miss the prophetic sessions you really miss the miracle service you see that you miss the prophetic session help is coming hold on the lord is showing me something help is coming i'm seeing help is coming that's what the spirit of god is saying help is coming help is coming help is coming it will surprise you help is coming when god says help is coming it means people are coming men are coming men are coming i'm saying it again men are coming this is a word for somebody help is coming in the name of jesus christ the Lord is saying I should prophesy to someone. It won't read June. It won't read June. This is what God is saying. I don't even know what I'm saying. Listen. God gave you a word. God is saying you will not enter June without that miracle happening. And in the name of Jesus Christ, whoever that person is, I release that word. Let there be a performance. Let there be a performance. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a performance. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a young man that came here.
you you are not based here you came from another city and there is the call of god upon your life but i'm seeing that not only is there a call of god upon your life i'm seeing that there is an anointing mm -mm, i'm not saying you should come out this is there are many people that belong don't worry the anointing will will find you there is an anointing i've not done the impartation yet but there is an anointing that is coming on that gentle man it may spill over to others but it's for one you will go back there is a revival within your territory that has been allocated to you your person in the name of jesus let the anointing of the spirit find that person now You may look ordinary, said the Spirit of God, but when my grace comes upon you, I will do wonders through your life. The Lord is saying you may look ordinary, but when my grace comes upon you. You see, the anointing of the Spirit is the maker of men. It is not about what they want to do. In the name of Jesus, whoever that gentleman is, I bring you into that grace. I bring you into that anointing by the power of the Holy Spirit the Lord is giving somebody a kind of anointing here listen let me describe for you how it will work if you hold someone's hand and pray on an issue it is done that's how the anointing will work if at all you hold someone's hand except you don't hold the hand of the person and pray for that person whoever must carry this anointing I stretch my hands now by the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, may that anointing be so lavish upon your life. You will see strange testimonies as you agree with people. They will note you, they will note you for commanding results through prayer. Hallelujah. Let's pray for finances. Just allow me we'll round up I, I i i apologize already in advance i will do this very fast god is already visiting his people um there is a grace for finances i will continue to pray this until i see a manifestation of what i've seen in the spirit not only are there people here who are called just people men like um, ejimi that are called into the ministry of kingdom finance there are people who may not be called into that ministry but they are kingdom financiers because of that call and anointing upon their life the holy ghost will shift them in a certain way to grant them access you may look weak you may not have one naira in your pocket but listen i want you to believe me as i pray for you lord jesus where are these people that you are speaking to me about let the grace let the unction that makes for this kind of possibility let it be released upon them in the name of Jesus Christ let that grace be released upon them help him help him be sensitive gentleman please you would have injured him for nothing be sensitive huh in the name of Jesus that grace I called him because the Lord said I should minister to him that anointing is upon him I'm still praying there are people I'm seeing like coins being dropped on the hands of people in the spirit. This is, this is it, like a token of that grace, that call. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray now. Everywhere in this congregation and outside, if you are called into this ministry, I declare, You may not look like it, but I release the grace on you may the lord align your understanding about finances may he align your understanding about business in a strange and supernatural way that will cause you to command strange abundance i declare that as a result of this prayer god will connect you to strategic individuals strategic individuals hallelujah there are people here who have please listen we're rounding up there are people here inside outside 
you have what we call the mantle of a savior you may not be the firstborn in your family but all the while a grace has been following you because you represent an altar i'm going to pray right now there are people whether you are young or old if that grace if you are the one that represents the altar of god in your family then it's time for that altar to begin to speak right now in the name of jesus the son of the living god for everyone here you represent the epicenter of the purposes of god in your family i stir up that altar i put fire upon that altar now let it begin to burn that from your secret place you begin to shift things in your family from your secret place you begin to command and manipulate realities from the realm of the spirit i make it so i declare it so in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah then i know there might be many people this may be the last personal case i'll deal with and then we'll pray there might be many people here with this case but there is a particular woman here you are barren you are a, there's a particular woman not that you are standing for someone you yourself Please help them. Eleven years, no child. Madam, yes. how long? Seven years. Seven years. Yes. Eighteen years in total. You are standing here before the people of God because you believe that God can step in. You, madam? Eighteen years. You've Eight. been barren for how long? Eighteen years. Eighteen years. Yes. You. Yes. Madam, will you believe if I tell all three of you that according to the time of life, you will return with your children? No, 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 no. It's not amen. The question is, will you believe? Will you believe it? Madam, where are you coming from? I'm coming from Jushi. Where is that? Jushi at the back of enemies. Where are you coming from, madam? You are coming from Kaduna? Yes, sir. Who is this lady? Are you married? You've been barren too? Yes, sir. You too, madam? Please, if you are not married, don't come out here. If you are coming out for... If you are, if you, it's someone you are standing for, just remain there. Please remain. If you are standing for someone, I will pray. But if it is for yourself, madam, you too? Look at me. You are trusting God? How long have you been married? I've been married for like five years, but I have a child, but I've been trying for like three years now. You have a child yes, already? Sir. You yes, just sir. want another one? Yes, sir. It's all right. I'll pray for you. These ones don't have any. The devil is a liar. Madam, don't be embarrassed. You are not standing before. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You too. You too. You are trusting God. How long have you been married? Yes. Two years. No, you you had a child, you were even rejoicing, and you had a miscarriage. Yes. When? Last year. Last year. Yes. And from that time, this has affected you. Yes, I have to pray. There's something wrong with your stomach. Yes. The doctor already told you. I wouldn't say it in the open, but then this is what is killing the baby. Hold on, madam. Um, you had miscarriage, not even in tw in 2000 and in 2014 child, uh, that's what i'm saying you had a, they had to go and remove the baby yes because the baby died inside pieces, your stomach yes the baby pieces like yes. this inside your stomach yes sir. god is going to give you a child Amen. 
My dear, look at me, this lady. The mercy of God needs to speak for you. You, you love Jesus? You love Jesus? I'll pray for you. But you are not in need of a child. What you need is mercy. The mercy of God. Many of us don't know what the mercy of God is. The mercy of God is not for sinners. The mercy of God is his dimension that causes him to veto whatever limitation it is to come to help you. So when we say mercy, it's not just because you have to be a sinner. There are certain dimensions of God that are only revealed to you at the platform of his mercy. He said, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. I want to pray and prophesy to all of you and agree with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please go back and tell your various husbands that you were prayed for. I, I love men. I respect husbands. But many husbands don't love Jesus. They don't know Jesus. After their wives return like this and say, my husband, we just went for a program. They don't know what program. And they cancel out all of these things. It takes two to agree. Are we together? In the name of Jesus Christ, madam, put your hand in your stomach. I take away this demonic thing. Let it go now. In the name of Jesus, it disappears. Madam, I pray for you. The Lord opens your womb. In the name of Jesus, madam, by the grace of God, you carry your child. In the name of Jesus Christ, I remove every growth from your stomach. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you return with your miracle. Madam, look at me. God is going to use you. Amen. You are not just going to give birth to a child. The hand of God is on your life. It doesn't look like it. But there is nothing in this life that will ever satisfy you except the service of God. You will love God and serve Him. And with this miracle God is going to give you, every other woman you pray for yes, over the issue of the fruit of the womb, Amen, you will sir. see that God will open Amen. up your soul. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you will arise and have mercy upon this, my precious sister. In the name of Jesus. The voice of accusation that speaks against you, I silence it by the mystery of the blood. Now go and have your child. It's over in the name of Jesus Christ. It's over, my dear. Look at me. Go and prepare. You have a child now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, let the grace of God speak for you. Madam, I pray for you. Help her, please. It's over right now. Carry your child in Jesus' name. Please stretch your hands towards the altar. And let's pray. Stretch your hands in one minute. You, for yourself, madam. Okay. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's all right, madam. No problem. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray. Um, you are trusting God for a child. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's sister is going to have twins. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The power of God will come on that person now as I'm speaking. For the sake of your sister, carrying twins. This is twins. The Lord himself. There's one more person left. I'm hearing the voice of children, babies, crying. When it stops, then I know that it's over. I'm still, hold on. I'm still hearing it. There is still one more person, family. I'm like I'm hearing the voice of children Lord in the name of Jesus wherever that family is I pray that you locate them right now by the spirit of the living God you locate them right now you locate them right now I'm still praying you locate them right now in the name of Jesus 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 in the name of Jesus, stretch your hands and let's pray. Please begin to pray in one minute and say, Father, whatever I have dropped here, just keep her there, I'll pray for her. That's all right. Begin to pray in the spirit and declare that whatever you have dropped here turns to your testimony. In the name of Jesus, I'm laying hands here and I'm agreeing with you. Shalakato prakato impossible situations 
Mabrakatosa dia shana hasana malakatosh. Rekete kete kebara hasosia. Embrakato shala barakatos kade brende kete kalatosiata. Unto you that answers prayers shall all flesh come. Mabreza kado jane kelando safria hasabadash. Ingredo zede kosha barakatos ke adabalash. Please pray. Lord, turn around our captivities like the streams in the Negev. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let them say among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. We sow prayers in tears and we declare that we reap in joy. Lord, I bow my knees to you and I cry, visit your people. 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 Sheketo kato sana malikatos, embra kato skala baru sabari agatas. Hallelujah. This prayer you see we pray here is a very deep spiritual mystery. It's not a ritual. It's a revelation. Sometimes when I travel and I go, the Lord instructs me to do the same thing there and the amazing testimonies this for me is one of the most thorough ways of ministering to people because this is a summation of the your truest desires because you wrote them by yourself is a representation of your pain and your expectations this is you standing before god through your request and i decree and declare as i stand and step upon this request I declare, rise above every challenge. In the name of Jesus Christ. The same way I'm stepping on this, in the name of Jesus, that is how you are stepping on every situation. I turn every request in this place into your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me some of you it will be like you are dreaming the way you will see doors open in your life in the name of jesus christ every impossible situation represented here i cry to the god who is the god of this ministry that he will arise in power and surprise you for all those who have dropped their request online in the name of jesus christ the same grace that is visiting these requests is visiting their request in the name of jesus by the anointing of the holy spirit let there be miracles in jesus name please lift your hands everyone let me pray for you right now in the name of jesus christ listen you see every ministry let me tell you this it's an uncomfortable truth but it's true every ministry rises and stops at the spiritual level of lifting of the man of god wherever you stop spiritually as a man of god that's where the ministry rises it's impossible to lead a ministry that is higher than your own level of grace and anointing it doesn't work that way it can't work sustainably that means that when the man of god shifts in anointing and rises it means that everyone genuinely committed to that grace and that vision not based on your personal um, your personal press but by the implication of connection you should also rise do, do we agree do you believe that yes I have seen the grace and the glory of God and the authority of the kingdom multiply and rise in my life this year like never before and i want to pray for you in the name of jesus right there where you are inside and outside and all those connected wherever you are spiritually i prophesy to you rise and i shift you to a new dimension i shift you to a new dimension you have worked in miracles before but in the name of Jesus, may your hand do wonders. You have taught the word accurately before. But in the name of Jesus, may your tongue from tonight become the pen of a ready writer. 
in the name of Jesus Christ you have handled some level of finances before but I shift you into figures that you have never seen before in the name of Jesus Christ you have experienced favor before but I stand here in the name of Jesus and I declare a new order of favor you have had God before but I program your ears to hear deeper dimensions of the voice of God. I pray for everyone here, inside and outside. The mantle that causes men to be honorable, may that grace come upon you. May that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, this ministry has never gone up and come down. Never, not once it keeps going from glory to glory i declare let that be the definition of your life from today spiritually financially academically for those who are students i decree and declare the grace for extraordinary excellence i release upon you the grace for extraordinary excellence i release upon you anyone here trusting god for a job a noble job i stretch my hands between now and next miracle service return with your testimony in the name of jesus christ and anyone here due for promotion i decree and declare by the finger of god step into a new dimension of promotion the fire that is upon your altar that is the secret of your life the secret of every man's glory is the fire that burns upon his altar when nothing is burning you will just be a talkative for nothing you will read and teach and nothing will happen i pray for you in the name of jesus the mystery that preserves fire upon the altars of men let it work for you let it work for you I found the calls of your prayer life. I found the calls of your spiritual life. I found the calls of your word life. This is a prayer many people don't desire. I pray for a baptism of spiritual hunger. I say it again, a baptism of spiritual hunger. That the Lord will expand your appetite for spiritual things. Every kind of arrival mentality. Every kind of spiritual complacency. Where there is no, in, there is no desire to press for the deeper things of God. Satisfied by the little results here and there. I declare that the Lord plants a fresh hunger. The hunger that can take you on a three days fast just to study the word and pray in the name of Jesus Christ some of us the grace to fast has died you fast by 10 you are yawning your life away and you can't pray I pray for you now in the name of Jesus the spirit of gluttony and uncontrolled lust for food I cause it from your life in the name of Jesus Christ And finally I pray for you in this strange season where God is lifting men and changing their stories as I'm praying for you I'm praying this one for myself too in the name of Jesus may you rise to a level where all those who knew you will turn and say this one is the finger of God in the name of Jesus Christ I'm calling on people who want to surrender their heart to Jesus now. Please, everyone stand. Please, everyone stand. No move. Let me tell you something. One of the assignments of the church is to harvest souls for the kingdom. We must be passionate and desperate and intentional about souls coming to Jesus. Are we together? There are people here who are saying apostle 
if you will lead me to Jesus I'm not too proud I'm not a rebel I can come to him genuinely please listen carefully overflow three overflow two one by the roadside and those who are following online the church is gradually becoming very very unresponsive to the need for salvation you are a man of god here take the issue of the salvation of souls seriously if you are not saving souls as a church you are this in fact is sin it's not just wrong it's not just disobedience it's sin it is important that we continue to partner with the spirit that people come to jesus it's not just a ritual to show we are spiritual it is the only way that their lives can be salvaged first eternally and then to live a life of victory here are we together there are people here you may have been born from a christian background a number of you love jesus christ but you are saying man of god i have never truly made a commitment for jesus i have i've seen people do all this but tonight i want to make that decision some of you are saying man of god i love jesus but i need a renewal in my life i just need a fresh touch i know that my life is not the way it used to be and i want to straighten out my ways with god if you are here and you belong to these two categories aside from overflow three i'll just request for time's sake that you move forward to the front of your projector screen overflow one overflow two the roadside and inside here i want you to come out right where i am here wherever you are god bless you quickly please we have one minute for this wherever you are jesus is speaking to you you must be born again no one will force you but you have to win this war tonight you have to win this war tonight god bless you quickly come boldly come like one who is coming to receive an award don't come as if you are attending a funeral this is a miracle of miracles god bless you apostle what if people know me and they see me leave all those people this is the business of you and god make your way to the front quickly those coming from outside please let's clear the way for them so that they hurry up let's clear the way for them god bless you god bless you as you come quickly god bless you as you come you need jesus please don't come out here to pretend come out genuinely from your heart you must be born again every single one of us had to pass through that process jesus said i am the door not a door the door the door the only door every other route is a, is, is is not correct you have to follow through the door hallelujah thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for coming out to make this declaration i want you to know that this is a very noble declaration lift your right hand after me and say this passionately and truthfully say lord jesus if you're joining them please come quickly join them say lord jesus i love you say it again i love you with all my heart i believe that you are the son of god that you died for me you shed your blood for my sin tonight i receive you i receive your life i as i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life in the name of jesus i move forward ever and backward never the grace to stay the grace to grow the grace to be useful is mine tonight in jesus name lord jesus i stretch my hands towards these precious people they have come before your people making declarations making commitments to live for you to love you to serve you i pray that the grace that makes this a possibility let it be released upon their lives in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven i declare that the power of sin the power of satan is broken over your life you go from glory to glory in the name of jesus christ amen and amen i appreciate you i want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands all of you just follow him in concert there will be a group of people to just talk to you address you very quickly and then you will be back to your seat let's appreciate the lord for tonight dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye!
pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline 